All right. Hello, chain breakers. Y'all, if I'm fuzzy, let me know and I'll open uh, my door. Um, I just want to make sure the Wi-Fi is, is acting like it's supposed to act. All right. So today we are talking about narcissists and the octopus spirit. Y'all, we going deep into this thing. I hope you are prepared. Y'all may want to take notes for this one. Okay. So narcissists and the octopus spirit, we're going to, we're going to draw the correlations and the patterns between, uh, these two and the octopus spirit is not a spirit that's talked about a whole lot. All right. But but uh, we're going to talk about it on today and we're going to go deeper uh, on today because it, it is truly an entanglement from hell. And first Peter uh, five and eight says, be sober, be alert, be cautious at all times that the enemy of yours, the devil prowls like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. The octopus spirit is a spirit that seeks to control your mind. The octopus spirit is a spirit that seeks to control your thoughts. All right. So we talk a lot about Jezebel, but do you know about the octopus spirit? Let's get into this. Let's examine the parallels between the octopus spirit and narcissists. It's much more common and more people need deliverance. And we're going to say a deliverance prayer at the end of this. More people need deliverance from this spirit. Let's go ahead and break this thing down. All right. Hello, family. I am Shannon Savoy, certified life coach, speaker. Let me sit back. Speaker, uh, advocate and survivor of domestic violence and narcissist abuse. I am the CEO of NARC Free Living. And here we speak on narcissist abuse and spiritual warfare from a biblical perspective. We are armoring up, y'all. So I am a system breaker, a system disruptor. I help others break free from demonic systems like the octopus spirit. All right and narcissists. I empower and help others to break free from these systems and navigate their way out of abusive, dysfunctional situations and relationships according to practical strategies and God's words. We are truly, God is truly breaking the chains through the blood of Jesus, the blood of Yeshua. We are truly breaking the chains of narcissist abuse, okay? So before um, I get into this, let me say a prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would increase, decrease all of me, Lord, so that they don't see me, Lord, but they see your spirit, that they see your anointing, that chains be broken on today, Heavenly Father. I pray that every evil yoke of the enemy is, is broken on today. In the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, may you cover this lie, Heavenly Father. May you cover your people with the blood of Jesus. For those who are in agreement with this prayer, Lord, we forbid any transference of demons between the this medium, between uh, the mediums, Heavenly Father, between the internet, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, because we know Satan seeks to transfer demons any way he can. So we forbid and we decree and declare that chains will be broken on today. And we decree and declare that no demonic transference will take place on today in the name of Jesus, Lord. We place on the full armor of, of God, Heavenly Father, the full armor as you gave us in Ephesians 6, Heavenly Father, and we equip ourselves with every piece of our armor in the name of Jesus and squid and octopus spirit. We come in hot right now in the name of Jesus. We bind and command you to go in the name of Jesus. Double mindedness, schizophrenia, that uh, narcissistic fall. We break your power and command you to go in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I want to say thank you to, um, uh, the channel VIPs, those who support the channel, it's only a few dollars a month just to be a member of the channel. That's just another way to soil on fertile soil. Hallelujah. So for those of you who come around these parts, you know, you're getting set free. You're getting uh, you're getting knowledge. You're getting wisdom. You're breaking the chains. That is another way for you to sow. 
How about you know that? All right. So thank you, uh, VIPs. All right. Don't forget uh, to follow uh, my husband, Faith Based Workplace. He did a message last night on the female narcissist and how she infiltrates. Oh, I'm sorry, the female narcissist. No, no. What did you talk about? The narcissistic family. I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll be talking about the female narcissist on Clubhouse on Tuesday. I'm getting my wires crossed. So on Tuesday, we'll be on Clubhouse talking about the narcissistic female and how she infiltrates. And Solomon talked last night about the narcissistic family, and it was an awesome message. All right. So um, don't forget to like on your way in here. Share this message out, you know, because somebody may benefit from this message. All right. Um, somebody may uh, be encouraged by this message. Somebody else needs to know about the octopus spirit. OK. And then just to let you know, um, I'll be taking a break. Excuse me. I'll be taking a break from uh, life coaching for a period of time. OK, but you'll still be able to ask questions and receive support um, if you have already scheduled or have an emergency situation and you are an existing client. I will make uh, considerations for you. And thank you to everyone who has sown, everyone who has sent me what, whatever, you know, what you have, what you have sown into this ministry. So I thank you into this ministry and the business, both sides. OK, so I thank you for for the time that you spent. I thank you for hitting the like. I thank you for any way that you have sown into this ministry. So I'm excited to see where God has us uh, going next. So, yeah, I'll be taking a little break from there uh, to focus on other ventures that God um, has is preparing me for. So how about, you know, you sometimes you got to shift. All right. When God tells me to shift, I move. I shift. All right. You know, God, one thing about God, he's not stagnant. Don't you know that the Holy Spirit, I don't want to quench the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit uh, breathes and, and brings creativity. And I want creativity to continue to flow. So narcissists, they may try to mimic and study, study, uh, study whatever it is that they want to study. But I promise you this, uh, if you try to study me, that's a test you're going to fail. All right. Because I am an cha effective change manager. I used to be a cha uh, IT pro program manager, IT uh, change manager, manager. And one thing that I know how to do uh, well is manage change. It does not manage me. So when God tells me to move, I'm like that song. When you move, I move just like that. So when God tells me to move, I move on that thing. Do you hear me? Because I've learned that obedience is better than sacrifice. And also in ministry, you have to learn for those of you, you probably, you know, you already know this time is money and people will do everything they can to not. So people will do everything that they can to suck you dry in business and ministry. So we must set firm boundaries. All right. There is one of me. There is one of you. All right. And I have projects, workshops, classes. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to get in on those, those will be coming up. Group coaching uh, will be coming up, but I refuse to let anybody. I think Telsha has said that I refuse to let anybody treat me like I'm common when I know ain't nobody doing it like this. And that's not arrogance. That's not arrogance. All right. That is the truth. Tell me where you find a person talking about narcissist abuse. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. Where you find talking about narcissist abuse, that it creates community. And talk about it from a biblical perspective. Talk about the different demonic spirits. Uh, uh, spirits. Tell me, chain breakers. Tell me. So I won't let people treat me. I know my work. I won't ever let you or anybody else treat me like I'm common. So I know when respect, when things are no longer being served, I know when to get up from that table. How about you? And when God tells me to shift, it's time to shift. All right. So let me see who is in these. I hope y'all understand what I'm saying in these in these comments. All right. Hey, Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, my sister. Amen. Hello, chain breakers. Uh, and those coming into the right and to their chain breaking. Stay strong, Trot. Shannon, once again, thank you on this wonderful Sabbath day amen hey joy hey family i'm looking forward to this conversation girl me too me too god has put a lot on me so i'm not gonna be, i'm not gonna be labor i'm gonna say hello hey alan b hello 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 bonita it's good to see you it's good to see you violet amen i'm ready for the word go miss shannon blessings to you and thank you so much you and violet y'all always putting in uh comments and i i go back and read the ones that i can't and sometimes i can't i can't respond to them all but i really um appreciate uh those of you who go back into the videos and leave comments uh during the week and things like that okay really seems an octopus with arms coming from everywhere we're gonna take a look at this octopus yes hey jasmine hello 
Yes, don't forget to subscribe uh, uh, to me, uh, Pink Girl, as well. All right. Thank you, uh, Sister Gigi or Gigi Peach. Thank you so much for your seed. I appreciate that. May God return that to you over and abundantly. Thank you so much. Yes. Hallelujah. Lucretia, it's good to see you. Yes. Thank you, Abba. Have your way. Hallelujah. Hello, uh, Nerd Colos TV. Amen. Yes, we're praying for your daughter, Coach Natisha. Amen. Really need prayers. I have to get out, um, but I'll see it all when I get home. Okay, no one has talked about this before. Amen. Yes, it will be right here for you on the replay. All right, sis. Yes, and we'll be praying for you as well. Don't forget to grab your notebook and pens. Yes, y'all, grab those notebooks, okay? Grab those notebooks. The Holy Spirit is always moving. If he moves and you stay still, right. Oh, that's good, Alan B., even though you didn't go backwards, he still he still moved forward and you stay stuck. Right. Right. Amen. That's good. Amen. Hello, Judy. Hello, Dinah. Shalom. Hello. Amen. Amen. Uh, I love your content. I ran across your thank you. Words can change the world. I ran across your content uh, a few months ago and it has been amazing. I don't know anyone who I could relate to. Your perspective has been powerful. Thank you for that. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit. It is definitely not me. Thank you, sis. Tiffany, I appreciate uh, your super sticker. May God return that to you. And thank you for, for sowing where you grow. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, yes, he did do a great message. All right, y'all. So the announcements, uh, as people come in, uh uh we appreciate you all right uh go ahead and hit that like button all right so let's get into this all right so narcissists were very similar to uh octopuses all right all right octopus the octopus spirit is a spirit that seeks to control the mind just think of how uh i was thinking about this this morning i was talking to solomon and it was like that medusa that that medusa where it has all the snakes and the tentacles coming out of it all right that octopus uh spirit seeks to control your mind it is a shape-shifting if you and i remember uh me and my kids went to i love um i do love science right i'm, an, I'm somewhat of a nerd undercover nerd right i read like nobody's business i'm and i've always been a reader always been an inquisitive uh child and i still love um science and uh you know learning about different things so we went to this uh museum here in houston right and it had uh the octopus um it was what was that i forgot where we went to some kind of science thing and it had an octopus in the you know in the aquarium right and it was by itself of course it was by itself and the octopus oh octopuses aren't pretty some people say they are pretty. Some people say they are, you know, a lot of things. Thank you, Sister Benita. God bless you. May God return that to you over and abundantly. God bless you. Thank you so much. But that octopus, he wouldn't come out, right? He was sneaky. He would, like, he would, you could see, like, his one eye peering out from, from the aquarium or whatever. But while people were there, he would not come out. And that's how o that octopus spirits work. It is a shape-shifting. It is a chameleon spirit. It is a, a spirit that is from the marine kingdom, all right, that seeks to control and dominate you. It is similar to a python spirit, all right? It breaks you down. It wears you out. It is associated with, with, with tormenting its victim, all right? It will bring on migraines and headaches. And I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to tell, talk to you about the signs of that thing. All right. So when that, you let that octopus spirit or that optimist, uh, octopus uh, spirit uh, uh, gets in there, once those that demon is, uh, is in there, you cannot say what else will come in because demons work in groupings. And I'm going to talk about the groupings, the common groupings associated. All right. And then we're going to pray a deliverance prayer because somebody in here needs to be uh, uh, delivered from this spirit. And most of the times, if you have been uh, impacted by a narcissist, the octopus spirit has been working in you and you don't even know it. So I'm going to talk about that fog, the, how the octopus uh uh, works. We're going to talk about this thing. Okay. So many times we talk about Jezebel. We think you can gray rock. You can't gray rock no octopus spirit. I'm here to tell you, you don't know what else is oppressing that narcissist. And we talk about the transference of spirits. Whatever is affecting that narcissist is going to try to infect you as well. That's why I say, and I will continue to say after narcissist abuse, you don't need, you may need therapy, but even more than therapy, you need deliverance. 
deliverance. Do you hear me? Because that transference of, of spirits is real. Do you understand that? All right. So how does the narcissist trap its prey? So similar to an octopus, all right, narcissists study its prey to seek how to best attack you. They are chameleons. They are masters of disguise. The octopus spirit works in a grouping of spirits, all right? It works in tandem with witchcraft, all right? Some uh, in the form of that Jezebel spirit, all right? Think of the head of that narcissist. At the head of that narcissist is a dominating, a domineering, a controlling spirit, and its tentacles are Jezebel, idolatry, witchcraft, sorcery, uh, uh, control, intimidation, at the it, it's it's we're going to talk about the physical makeup of it so when you let jezebel in it's not just jezebel in your life it's not just jezebel in your lineage it is an octopus spirit as well and if we don't get delivered from this it will seek to control your mind that's why some of you are still ruminating to this day some of you can't get that narcissist out of your mind you have a spirit of insanity you feel like you're going crazy you feel like no one understands what you're going through that is an octopus spirit that is seeking to dominate your thoughts that is seeking to dominate your mind and if you don't know about the octopus spirit it is hard to be to break free how can you break free from something you don't even know to renounce hallelujah so lord thank you for this knowledge thank you for this wisdom and thank god for showing us how narcissists and and these uh uh invoke these spirits do you understand whether it's from your lineage a lot of our cultures get in or are already uh working hand in hand with witchcraft part of the marine kingdom that's why i say and i will continue to say god is calling you out you think that this is a game you think that this is about your feelings and that's why i'm so passionate about that because it's not about your feelings it's not about the holidays it's not about you being around these people it is about your destiny these spirits have come to kill still and destroy you they don't care about your biology they don't care about your genealogy they don't care that they're they're your mother they don't care that they're your father you care because you're a, a, a rational thinking person the spirit when a person is harassed or some of them are even possessed they've given themselves over god has given them them over to a reprobate mind and you're sitting up here tormented because you have a spirit of octopus wrapped around your head and you don't know you wrestle with should i go no contact should you go no contact with a a, a killer do you understand me and not that that person is trying to kill you but those spirits that they have given themselves over have given themselves over that's why when god showed me this thing about my family oh i'm like deuces i'm out i'm out and no i will not have my kids around somebody who is harassed that i know is tormented by demons i would be a whole plum fool you think i'm gonna be wrestling back and forth oh should i let my kids around their grandmother to hell with that i will not i will not do the, what it's faith over feelings over here do you understand me because i'm not tormented by uh by an octopus spirit do you hear me not anymore all right so these things are coming in to destroy you all right uh and it works with idolatry all right uh either at its head or in its tentacles all right and and in comes lust and and uh, uh all kinds of other uh demonic spirits which have to be chopped off you think you can gray rock an octopus no you can't gray rock an octopus you can't gray rock a demon do you hear me but so many have tried and so many have failed all right these things will drive you crazy all right so these octopus they use their their they're very flexible they're very fluid just like the narcissist all right and they seek to seduce their prey all right through control and intimidation and domination and ignorance all right uh and all octopuses um are there they they release what i'm gonna talk about what they release and secrete all right that ink all right there's some they are venomous but there's only one species that i that i found that was able to kill a human but they don't have to kill you with their ink they kill you by coiling themselves around you that's what that python spirit does do you hear me that python spirit just grips you and coils itself around you little by little that's what that narcissist does when it comes into your life it coils itself around you it gets into every part of your being all right and then it secretes that ink 
Oh, let me talk. I'm going to talk about that. All right. So how do narcissists move? All right. So narcissists trap is prey by getting into your emotions, by having an emotional connection, because when you are emotionally invested into something, you want your idolatry to pay off. You want your sacrifice to pay off. You want your time to pay off. But you don't know that with the narcissist, the narcissist is seeking to control you. And you are the narcissist prey. Once those spirits get into their mind, they no longer think of you as their family. They no longer think of you as their friend. They think of you as an object. Do you hear me? And if you can't, if you cannot see the narcissist for who they are, oh, they got a mental illness. Psychology, uh, uh, it has its place. Do you hear me? But psychology does not override the word of God. Calling these people and resigning them to a mental illness has, is what ca has caused people to stay in a situation much longer. Because if somebody has a mental illness, you think that they can be helped. You think that they want your love. You think that if I just love this person enough, I'll love them right on up out of their mental illness. The devil is a liar. God gives us all free will and the narcissist has choices. And then for those of you who are under, you want to put yourself under the law and you think that the Holy Spirit, you think that God has commanded you to stay married to a narcissist, you go right on ahead. But I can tell you, your life will not bear fruit as long as you were with the narcissist because you are under a curse. Do you hear me? And God doesn't bless curses, but God's with obedience comes blessings and curses. So you can stay married to that thing, but you better study that thing. You better do like I did. I had to sit at God, not wrestle with him like Jacob. I said, God, I, I was ready to divorce Solomon. Do you hear me? And I'm, I'm talking too much, but I'm going to tell this thing. I said, God, because somebody, this witch came to me and said, you better divorce your husband or you're going to hell. You're going to hell if you don't divorce your husband. She was a whole witch. I didn't even know it till later on. All right. And she said, if you don't divorce him, you're going to hell. So I was like, God, I don't, you know, remarriage and all this, you know, they talk about marriage permanence. I had to seek God for myself. And a lot of y'all are like that right now because you have not studied, because you have not wrestled with God. You think that God is going to send you to hell if you divorce someone who was already out the door. If you divorce somebody, and I'm not advocating for it. Hey, don't, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. What I'm saying is you go to Holy Spirit with that thing. You go to God and you don't let him go till he tells you the truth about that thing. Do you understand me? Because some of y'all are staying with these people because because somebody, the church and, and the other people have told you that God is going to send you to hell if you divorce somebody who is killing you. That is That goes against everything that God is. So you better get with God. Do you hear me? You better go to God on your own. All right. So let me see. Yes, they are as sneaky as they can be. Hello, Boothu. It's good to see you. Yes, that Jezebel uh, is tough. Oh God, but oh God, he is a, uh, God is a chain breaker and a deliverer. Set us free. Hallelujah. You hear me, sis. All right. So how do narcissists move? All right. Let me see. Let me show this. Uh, so narcissists, uh, and octopuses, once you get in with a narcissist, it's very easy to, to get entangled with one. And it's very hard, uh, to untangle yourself. It, Excuse me. It certainly is an entanglement from hell because an a, a octopus is similar to uh, a narcissist is similar to an octopus. An uh, octopus has six legs. All right. They use this to hold its prey up or down. All right. And it attacks through oppression upon your body. It, it causes itself around you. It places its weight around you. All right. And then it, it comes in and affects every part of you from the inside out. All right. And then it has two arms. The arms are there to draw you in and, and bully and throw you away, similar to that Leviathan spirit. All right. Where it comes in and, and tussles with you and throws you around until you are under, until you uh, do what they want you to do, until you are under their control. All right. All right. And then they have what is what is uh, ink. They spew out their ink, which confuses and poisons its prey. All right. Or it can poison its prey. All right. So when an, uh, a, a octopus is in fear, 
it spews this ink all right and i'm gonna talk about that in a, in a little bit in more in depth all right but it spews this ink all right and this is how a narcissist works this is really why you listen to me chain breakers this is why you have that narcissistic fog all right that fogginess that you feel is when that spirit and ejects its its venom it ejects its ink into the atmosphere all right it causes confusion oh lord help us all right it causes confusion that is a defense mechanism uh given by the octopus to scare and to uh you know to to uh stabilize its prey so when uh octopus is in fear then they will spew that ink out at you and it blinds its prey before it strikes you and that's what the narcissist does to you all right when you get into a narcissistic relationship you are blinded by the spirit of the octopus you are blinded by the ink all right you and that's why when you get out you feel dazed and confused your identity has been stripped away you don't know who you are because you haven't been delivered from the spirit of octopus you haven't been delivered and that fog is around your brain that's why god says pull down those strongholds all right renew your your mind and some of you think that you can do that by watching youtube videos about the narcissist they won't deliver you do you understand that all right so in comes these spirits of control that you begin to question yourself and think that you are crazy it, it, it that ink puts that spirit of doubt all right that you can't think straight all right it is and it puts the the victim into us into a like a stupor into a daze try to tell somebody who is in a narcissistic relationship that they should leave they're gonna look at you like what they're gonna look at you like a stoop they're gonna look at you at a with a stupor and that's why you can't tell uh uh victims you can't tell them anything until they come out of that fog they're not gonna hear you they hear the words that are coming out of your mouth but they it doesn't permeate their ear gates because the ink and the tentacles are wrapped around their mind all right and until they get out of it they'll continue to stay in a relationship that is literally killing them that is killing every part of them because they they don't understand what is going on all right they don't understand how to take authority over that spirit all right Be until and you, and you can't take authority over a spirit until you come out of agreement with it so if you are in agreement with it and you think that god has sent you a narcissist so be it so be it i'm not here to convince you i'm just here to tell you to go to the holy spirit i'm not advocating for anything but i'm here to tell you go to holy spirit about that thing because that spirit will have you double-minded do you hear me and in the spirit room that octopus it looks like like i said like that medusa that thing just wrapped around your neck all right that's why the chains that's why each chain has to be broken each tentacle has to be uh uh severed off all right so that's what you're doing right now those of you who have come out of this thing you are you are uh uh cutting off the octopus's tentacles one by one it doesn't happen all at once do you hear me it doesn't happen all at once the more you sit with god the more he will show you where the chains need to be broken where there is a tentacle wrapped around your head do you understand me so i and i'm gonna show you a video i want y'all to see how op octopus um escapes similar to a narcissist you wonder why narcissists um why narcissists uh are able to get out of situations all right they're able to get out of situations because they have this spirit of octopus all right they have this spirit of octopus that allows them to to maneuver out of these situations yes i used to feel like i was in an abyss because you were you were that marine kingdom spirit and got on you all right so amen and, and, and uh i pray that you are breaking free but if not we're gonna say this prayer uh at the end of this okay because we want people free so the octopus comes in many different sizes and may god return that to you thank you gg may god return that to you over and abundantly so they come in different sizes okay they can be 12 to 36 uh inches long uh way up to what was that the giant uh pacific i don't know if i have a picture of that one let me see that might have been this big one i'm not for sure but the giant pacific octopus is the largest octopus they typically go grow 16 feet long and weigh around uh, 110 pounds but one was recorded to weigh more than 600 pounds a 600 pound octopus all right according to national geographic the smallest octopus is smaller than an inch long and weighs less than a gram 
All right. So these things, these things, uh, uh, all those, I think it's like 240, uh, suction cups. No, these, these things are, um, uh, are not, not nice when they unhook themselves or, uh, attach themselves to you, just like the narcissist. Okay. So let's look at the common demon uh, groupings associated with the octopus spirit. All right. Just like any other spirit, nar uh, um, the octopus spirit works in tandem with the other ones. OK, so if God has called you um, into deliverance, it is important that you study and you be led by the Holy Spirit to learn about these demon groupings and their common um, associations. So just like uh, it, uh, all other forms of witchcraft, octopus spirits use their weapons to exercise their control. And they do this through intimidation, manipulation, and domination, as I said before, right? It is a process. All right, so the eight tentacles can represent, um, and I got this out of, I think, uh, John Eckhart's book, Demon Hit List, all right? Um, they can rep let me fan myself they can represent uh religion fear pride lust greed false doctrine we don't talk about that all right when somebody has that religious spirit all right uh, or or what or, or teach in a, a error or spirit of error and a false doctrine deception deception all right that's how like uh uh samson and delilah Right. That's how Delilah got in right through the spirit of deception. All right. She had a spirit of octopus. All right. That was one of the spirits. All right. She also has some other that Delilah spirit is crafty. So anytime you see deception. All right. That 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 is part of the octopus. Uh, um, uh, of their, one of their tools. Okay. So those eight tentacles, again, represent religion, fear, pride, lust, greed, false doctrine, and deception. Deception is the biggest one, one of the biggest ones. That's how the narcissist gets in through deception. How many of you were lied to by the narcissist? All right. This is, uh, associated with, um, the, the, um, the uh, octopus spirit. We talk about Jezebel. Jezebel is not the only spirit that narcissists, I told you, they're almost like legion. Now, I don't know if it's, it's 3,000 or 6,000 of them in there, but it's a lot of demons that they wrestle with. Do you hear me? And if you don't go through deliverance, those de those uh, unclean spirits, those, those spirits are just attaching themselves to you. That's why deliverance is a continuous process. You know, it, it doesn't, it won't ever stop. All right. And some of you don't think you're delivered uh, because of you don't feel like you're delivered. All right. Or or, you know, you, you don't you run into different, you know, deliverance ministers. You have to be careful um, about that. Some things only come by sitting with the Holy Spirit, some revelations. Now, there are some 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 powerful deliverance ministers who can, you know, deliver and break off things uh, off of you. But sometimes God will reveal things to you by sitting with God, all right? And we have to be careful about always wanting to run to somebody, all right, when God has equipped us. Now, you should, it's nothing wrong with getting help, all right? Don't don't mis misconstrue what I'm saying. It's nothing wrong with getting help, but it's th certain things that you, that will come by, by the Holy Spirit. We always say, I wasn't I taught this in church. You're not gonna learn this stuff in church. I have never, ever, 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 in my 45 years of living heard a sermon preached on the octopus spirit. Most of the things I've talked about, I don't hear uh, in, in the modern day church. All right. Now there are some churches that are preaching and teaching this thing, but, but uh, um, as a whole, no. All right. So I had to sit with Holy Spirit to learn these things. That's the school I went to, the spirit of the Holy, the school of the Holy Spirit. All right. And some of you are going to learn that same way. Some of you have already learned that, that, that same way. All right. That's how God designed this, this thing. Okay. So let's look at the physical and uh, biological makeup of the octopus. Let me show y'all. Do I want to show that one yet? No, I won't show that one yet. I'm going to show y'all a video. All right. Um, let me see. No. So as I said, I don't know if y'all can see that too much. All right. Let me make this bigger. So you can see um, the physical makeup of the octopus. Octopuses are very smart, y'all. All right. They are very smart. All right. So narcissists can can be not be that bright. Let me say that. 
and they could not be that bright but because of the demons that equip them they are able to to learn different things all right the demons give them certain knowledge isn't that what the fallen angels did Isn't that what the nephilim did they came down and gave knowledge to the to the people hidden knowledge the occult knowledge the the secret knowledge that that uh we weren't supposed to have just yet you know what i mean so and uh octopuses have three hearts all right all right and if they if they lose if they, one of their tentacles get cut off and sometimes they will go into cannibalism where they'll eat uh one of their their tentacles off all right but if they lose one uh sometimes it will grow back all right and the octopus this is also associated with the squid spirit okay but um but the not uh the octopus has uh what about ten thousand what does it say ten thousand times uh more neurons and is more potent Ooh, let me read this. No, they carry a neurotoxin to stun and kill their prey. The blue ringed octopus's uh, neurotoxin is 10,000 times more potent than cyanide and able to kill 26 adults at one time. But most octopuses neurotoxins uh, aren't strong enough to harm a human. All right. All right. They can change color. All right. And the texture of their skin to blend in perfect with their environment. They do this in point zero three seconds wow do you hear that so that that octopus is able to shape shift in three in point three seconds and we saw a video uh i'm not going to show that when i might link it in the description or in the comments where an octopus um something was chasing it or something and it blended in with the you know the the foliage all the stuff at the bottom of the sea don't you know that's the same way narcissists do that's why we don't know who they are a lot of times because they come in and they assimilate into their environment just like the octopus they come in they come into church they come into workplace they come into every environment into your community they talk the talk they seemingly walk the walk but they don't bear the fruits of the spirit they do not uh um uh they are they are uh shapeshifters they are crafty do you understand me so this is the same thing that the octopus spirit does okay oh, okay sis thank you uh thank you um but this is the same thing that they do they sim assimilate into their environment all right so they are crafty they are slimy slithering and they don't have to be that smart i don't know if you know that they don't have to be smart that their demons enable them to be smart okay so it has eight tentacles three hearts and nine brains all right they have a brain in uh that because they have uh one in their heads and one in each of their tentacles they have a central brain that controls the central nervous system of the octopus and then there's a brain in each of their arms this allows the arms to work independently and this is found on the internet that uh this allows the arms to work in independently of one another yet together toward the same goal oh that's good i don't know if you know that but that's good because that's exactly how demons work do you understand me that is exactly how demons work demons each have their own function all right we you know there's demons uh you know demons of of insomnia there's demon there's just there's all these spirits they each have their individual function but just like an octopus they work uh in independently and they work interdependently toward the same goal which is to take you out which is to thwart your purpose which is to destroy and kill you do you understand me and then they have three hearts two of the hearts pump blood uh to the gills while a larger heart circulates the blood to the rest of the body so while an octopus is, is swimming the organ uh that delivers blood to the or to the um the organ that delivers the blood to the organ stop beating all right this this exa exhausts the octopus all right and this is in, in the smithsonian which is the reason why they prefer to crawl uh rather than swim mm -hmm. so just like a narcissist all right an octopus is three hearts slightly all have slightly different roles all right one circulates the blood around the body while the other two pump it past the gills to pick up oxygen all right so they can fit into the tiniest of spaces just like narcissists they shape shift do you hear me they blend into their environment a narc is able to go like i said before into churches into schools into neighborhoods into communities into workplaces uh everywhere and observe they sit back oh yeah they studying you they sit back 
All right. They sit back and study you before they figure out how they're going to attack you, how they're going to get in your circle. They have absolutely no conscience and no remorse. They can discard uh, and do these things with absolutely no second thought because what they want, uh, their goal, just like that tentacle, is to achieve their goal. And once they have achieved their goal, they can go on about their business. You'll be scratching your head because you wouldn't operate like that. You wouldn't do the things that the octopus spirit, that the narcissist would do, all right? But they figure out how to squeeze into your environment and assimilate. These things are the best uh, camouflage uh, experts. All right, they don't uh, they don't change just the color of their skin. They change the way they look and they feel, and that's what a narcissist does. The narcissist will get with you, and in one season they are a church goer. Uh, they are you know uh, uh, you know uh, supposedly reading their Bible or supposedly men and women of God, and in the next season whoever they get with, they just pick up their their they just mirror them and assimilate similar to an octopus okay all right so they do the same exact things let me see what y'all saying that thing is ugly when i was uh with the narcissist that narcissist sleeping pills would not work no peace at all three months not free and i'm enjoying my sleep in peace hallelujah amen 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 okay michael she's using scripture to control you that's witchcraft prayers for you okay hello michael yes i feel like i've dealt with some six hundred pounders right yes god uh taught me to hate false teachings right the more you get with god the more you will mm -hmm. amen isn't that great kayla yes there are there they they are so many demons and they have different rankings right they sure do legions are many mm -hmm. right god was sharing with me today people are looking for signs and wonders over truth that octopus spirit will give lying signs as long as you're not interested in truth right and that's so true and that's what people are looking for and that's why the antichrist is going to be able to fool even the very elect they're going to be able to fool because the antichrist is going to be able to do signs and wonders and if you're not rooted in truth if you're not rooted and God, if you're and you're not out of idolatry, you will bow down to the Antichrist with no problem. COVID was a a a um was a a test run. It was bigger than the COVID. It was a test run to get people ready for the new world order, to get people ready for the um for uh, the Antichrist spirit. This is what this is for. All right. This is what God, Satan wants to wants you to bow. If you won't just flat out bow and worship him through uh, through you know idolatry and whatever, he'll get you to bow through celebrities. He'll get you to bow through narcissists. He'll get you to bow any way he can. Okay. So what are the signs that you are entangled um, with a octopus spirit? All right. There's a spirit. It's similar to Python because it's all a part of the marine kingdom, right? So it's similar to the python uh and mermaid spirits y'all the little mermaid all that all that stuff is demonic i'm sorry to tell you, you got your kids wearing dressing up as little mermaids all that is our serpent spirits marine spirits from the marine kingdom you have to be careful um uh what you watch uh disney all disney especially I, um we we have to be over disney by now all right we have to understand what these things come to do but a lot of disney movies are um you know the the world the 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 underworld and all that that is the marine kingdom all right that is the the uh, the the water the the water spirits and all that okay a lot of our ancestors worship the water this is why a lot of these places near water are accursed okay you go to these different places don't be picking up their souvenirs okay don't be picking up their souvenirs even i had to repent for uh, wearing lays in Hawaii. God woke me up one morning and had me study uh, polytheism and, and how, you know, we go to Hawaii, they put the lays on you. All right. And that was, that was to protect you. That's why I stopped wearing crosses. Okay. Um, to each his own though. But um, that's what God convicted. That was a personal conviction that God uh, convicted me of. So I had to look at the root of that thing. But um, when you go to Hawaii, they put the lay on you and that was to keep their their demigods and their gods uh, 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 to protect you. All right. So um, the more I studied about that thing, God had to show me that. But each culture 
has its own marine spirits, has its own uh, uh, water spirits, has, has its, you know, its own demonic spirit. That's why God is calling us to come out of this world, come out of your culture, come out, come out of it. And many people are, are, are perishing because they're going back to their ancestral roots. They're going back. That's what I said in that message with Kobe Bryant and with Nipsey. That's what each, when these people die and they, they get sacrificed, their purpose is to introduce uh, a principality over the land. Do you hear me? All right. And with Nipsey, his mother and his family, they worship false gods. And so that, and so many people watched it and it was televised. You ain't, I told y'all Nipsey wasn't that popular like that to have his, his funeral popularized or, or, or televised. But his mother was talking about going back to her roots. Do you hear me? All right. And she was, she was speaking that she, and these people, she was speaking curses over the people that were watching over the church. Do you understand me? So she was telling the people to return back to their ancestors. When y'all was out here marching with BLM, all right, you didn't understand that these people were Marxists. You didn't understand that they were releasing curses over the land. When they tell you to chant their name, you didn't know that they were introducing you into necromancy. They wanted you, when somebody tell you chant their name, say their name, you don't have to say their name. You don't have to say their names to remember them. Uh, you can you can pray, you can do whatever you want to, but you don't have to be saying their names. Watch watch that, okay? But these, these things are introduced into our culture and because our people don't know they don't this is why black people were enslaved in the first place because of worshiping false gods and it's so idiotic to return to the very thing that kept our people in bondage do you understand me it is so idiotic to return to that very thing to this day but this is this is what people are doing this is how satan has this world going all right but back to the octopuses so you know when you are tired all right. You have uh, uncommon headaches and migraines, nightmares, you know, a spirit spouse that is associated with the marine kingdom. Somebody placing a ring over your finger. You're having uh, dreams about children uh, uh, in your dreams. You better be careful what you who you be talking to in your dreams. Do you hear me? Who you be talking to in the middle of the night? Somebody dies and, and this world has made it so it's OK to talk to the dead. It is not okay to talk to the dead after they are gone. They're by, they are no longer here. And people will say, oh, well, you know, they're in a better place. First of all, you don't know that. Oh, you know, um, you know, uh, just she's still with us. No, she's not. No, he's not. Unless they're a demon. That's the only way they still here. So we got to stop telling people these lies. I know you, you say it for comfort, but they are no longer here. If somebody die, if I pass away, I'm not here. Don't be talking. No, don't. No, nah, mm -mm, I'm not here. I'm going on. Do you hear me? All right. All right. And my body will return to dust. All right. It will return. All right. And, and I will await judgment. All right. No, everybody just don't go up to the clouds in heaven. And you no, know, it don't work like that. Do you understand me? So you got to be careful what, what you're going into. All right. But these, uh, uh, you will, uh, have, uh, block dreams. That is one of a telltale sign of a Marine spirit, <clears throat> whether it be Python, whether it be the octopus spirit, because it is causing mental confusion. And I told y'all several times, once I went no contact with my family and I went through, uh, uh, self deliverance, I went through deliverance. All right mental confusion was was uh lifted off of me i could dream again my dreams were being blocked because i was in agreement and i wasn't taking authority over the generational curses jesus said you know god said that these we have the power to trade up on the enemy's head the serpent's head but i wasn't crushing the serpent's head i was agreeing in agreement with the serpent because i didn't know any better but once god gave me the the green light and told me what i was wrestling with and told me to be obedient and to get away from evil doers i don't care if they're your mother or father get away from these people because these people honor me with their mouths but their hearts are far far removed for me those who do the will of my mother and father are my brothers and sisters once god made that clear to me i got away from them and once i did that things were lifted up off of me in the spirit i could breathe all right that's another sign all right asthma and and breathing that COVID, that is a demon do you hear me that is a demon uh trying to 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 um to squeeze the and constrict the oxygen from your lungs. Do you hear me? Not everything is a demon, but a lot of things are. Okay. When you have a uh, blurred and distorted vision, they work to, uh, 
to uh, cataracts. They work to um, blind you uh, in the natural. Okay, so you have to bind them up in the spirit. All right, so the water spirits like Leviathan, Python, uh, what is it, Behemoth, uh, uh, however you say that, you'll have spirits shortness of breath. You'll have feelings when somebody is choking you at night. You better, you got to investigate your dreams, okay? All right, so reoccurring dreams and reoccurring cycles, that can be uh, a manifestation of octopus spirit, all right? And the crazy thing about an octopus spirit, all right, is uh, once a, that tentacle is removed, if you don't keep your house swept clean, that thing will grow right back, do you hear me? All right. And just like Leviathan, that octopus spirit, like just like that narcissist, they come in and they bend and they twist your your wheel and your desires up. OK, until you are doing what they want you to do. That's why some of y'all had threesomes with a narcissist. You ain't really want to do that. You didn't really want to do that. But you wanted to do what the nar you want. I just want to please him. I just want to please him. So that narcissist got you into alternative lifestyles. You ain't want to be a, a poly poly uh polygamy you didn't want to be in polygamy but the narcissist got you into polygamy some of y'all weren't even thinking about uh homosexuality but the narcissist because of those wounds because of that trauma now they got you in a homosexual lifestyle that narcissist and, and we we don't talk about this too often but that narcissist will have you doing things that you wouldn't normally do and you're sitting there scratching your head like how did i get into this lifestyle how did I allow this person in? How have I gotten so, how have I strayed so far away from what God has shown me, from what I know to be true? And now the narcissist has you in an alternative lifestyle. The narcissist has you, all right, because you gave up your authority. Yeah, it's on YouTube. But the narcissist has led you into these things, all right, because you have given your authority up. You Instead of taking authority over them, you have given your authority to the narcissist. And now that spirit of octopus has come in, and now you begin to think like the narcissist. You begin to have lust-filled and perverted and uh, 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 disruptive thoughts. You begin to ruminate over the narcissist, all right? That is an indicator that you are entangled uh, with the octopus spirit, all right? So when a narcissist feels that they are being rejected or close to being uncovered, they spew out a smear campaign similar to spewing out that ink, all right? This is done to inflict maximum confusion upon their targets to confuse you and make you wonder why they seemingly uh, uh, ran away from you. Now you're sitting there wondering, what, what did I do? What, did I do something? Did I do something? That is done purposely without a conversation, without, without any, uh, um, you know, discussion, you, you could be friends or, you know, uh, uh, in a relationship one day and the next day they will discard you like yesterday's trash. All right. So once that ink is on you, their demons will affect you. All right. That demon will sit up on top of your head and in your mind and wrap his tentacles over your brain, causing you to feel oppressed and depressed by the same spirits that the narcissist is entangled with. It is a demonic entanglement from the pits of hell. God will never send you a narcissist, but the devil will. Do you hear me? When you feel tired and, and bogged down for no reason, all right, it makes you feel tired. That python, that octopus spirit will make you feel like you are oppressed. Do you understand me? So we have to understand what is going on. All right, let's discuss how the narcissist uses the octopus spirit to get in your circle. All right. Oh, this is a this is a good one. All right. This is this is narcissism, how narcissists work. One uh one oh one. This is such an interesting live. Why can the narcissist not stay like they have ants in their pants? Not stay still. Because them demons, you got if you got demons in you, them you have demons that are just like they work independently they work independently so one demon wants you to do it one demon wants you one demon you know but whoever the strong man demon that's why you have to cast out the strong man demon but the narcissists don't go through deliverance because they don't think anything's wrong with them and i say this again the average person is afraid of deliverance talk about deliverance people oh they get kind of ooh, ooh, deliverance oh am i crazy am i do i have demons People just don't understand that we can have demons. We can have unclean spirits as well, but you're not possessed by them. They can harass and possess a Christian. They can harass and possess or not possess, but uh, torment you. 
All right. So narcissists don't go through deliverance because one, they, they walk in fear. And for two, they don't think anything's wrong with them. Something wrong with you. They don't think anything's wrong with them. And that pride prevents them. They are blinded by the gods of this world. All right. So they can't stay still because them demons make them move. Do you hear me? Amen. Amen. Uh oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right, Solomon. We did. Um, hey, Anonymous. Oh, okay. Hey, yes. I'm going to say your name. Thank you for being here. Right. A new, right. Right. Make that make sense. Make that make sense. I'm, I'm not even, yeah, make that make sense. Okay. So uh, let's see. Right. They definitely mirror and copy. I saw that and it was weird, but I thought it was because he loved me, but he was doing it for deception. Just sly. Yep. They do. They, they absolutely do. Yep. Solomon, uh, Disney is demonic. It sure is. Yep. It sure is. So how do they get in your circle? All right. Love you. You look pretty. Okay. Be safe. God bless you. All right. So how do they get in your circle? All right. They rope you in with future faking. Oh, they come in. Oh, you know, you're my best friend. Oh, I never had anybody like you. Oh, you're this. Oh, you're that. You know, or, you know, if it's a, you know, a woman, you know, trying to talk to a man, you know, she'll, she'll come in there and, and smooth your socks off, brothers. She'll come in there and do all the things that somebody else, you know, she'll appeal to, to your emotions, to that Superman, that king that's in you. She knows what she's doing. All right. And then, uh, um, you know, uh, they get all excited and it makes you excited. Right. But they don't, they don't, they do not plan on following through with any of it. So they get you to share your ideas, your past hurts with them. All right. The things that they do for you, they will do things for you, but it comes at a, a steep price. All right. It comes at a very steep price. All right. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. All right. Uh, let me see. And how else the, the narcissist gets in your circle? So they, they, your friends become their friends. All right. Have you ever, you, if you've been married to a narcissist, you know, they like uh, cozying up to your circle. All right. They like having your friends numbers. They like uh, keeping track on you. If it's your family, some of them, if, if you're not the main supply, they don't really care um, to meet your family a lot of times. But if you're you're supposedly the main one, they'll meet your family and pretend like they are going to just take care of you and be kind to you, knowing good and well, they have no intention of following through with what they said. Do you hear me? All right. And it's the same thing in the workplace. These they they will come in and steal your and even in a partnership. You have to be careful who you go into partnership with. They will come in, get close to you, get in your circle. And because it's an octopus spirit, they get so far in your circle. And before it's like that black widow uh, spider. And before you know it, they have their hooks everywhere. You block them one way, they come in the back door. You block them this way, they've gotten into with your friendship circle. They've gotten into your church. They will join your church just, just to uh, sit up there and look at you on Sunday. They will do things just to get in your circle. They'll go talk to the pastor before you get to the pastor because you know we, you know how we do. Oh, I just want to keep things quiet. I don't want nobody to know why the narcissist is talking talking a good game about you all the while the narcissist has been talking about you the whole relationship shortly after you got together shortly even your parents your parents get on the phone you know they like to gossip so when they get on the phone they telling your business they telling everybody's business they they talking about you don't think it if, if, you got to be careful when somebody talks about somebody else that they hang with best believe when you get up from that table if you sit around talking about them when you get up now now they're gonna talk about you too do you understand that you thinking oh we're just close so we talk about these things no no not a narcissist a narcissist will go back there and then the crazy part is they'll go back and tell the things that you said to the person all right so they can do that triangulation and they'll have the two they because they want to be the center right so they'll have the two two people they'll turn them away from one another so that they can be at the top in the center of the relationship they do that in families all the time all right all right and because with octopuses they have no skeletal system it allows them to to go through the ocean fast with with uh amount you know with a good amount of speed all right and just like an octopus the narcissist works fast as well 
all right they work with speed and precision once they've locked in on you all right the octopus has the ability and the agility to squeeze through the smallest spaces i'm gonna show you a video here in a little bit they can squeeze and get in the smallest of spaces and they are able to maneuver out of different situations all right have you ever wondered why why does it seem like the narcissist is always getting away with the things that they do because they got that octopus spirit that nobody is detecting all right so the octopus is the same way they trap their their the person in a corner and they twist and lie and and deceive that's what the narcissists do they, the narcissist twists and turns and that leviathan spirit and, that, and all those spirits work together all right to wear your behind out okay all right so let me show a few minutes of this video let me see let me show a few minutes I just want y'all to see. So if you're ever wondering how does a narcissist get away with doing what they do because they have that spirit of octopus that allows them to do that. A narc friend of me joined my neighborhood on, on an app to get intel on me. She joined as me given a duplicate page. I report the page. That's the things they do. Who has time for that? Narcissists do. Narcissists have time. They act like they so busy. They have time to set up false pages. They have time to do all kind of crazy things to you. They have time to stalk and monitoring. Remember, monitoring Hoover and Spirits are from the Marine Kingdom, okay? Hey, family. Thank you so much. Hey, brother. Harrison Family Vlogs. Y'all, he has a channel. That's the one I showed his Iyanla video. And he broke that. I always say he broke that thing down. It's good to see you. All right. So let me show this video. Uh, let me see. Let me share my screen. All right. Let's see. I just want y'all to see how narcissists operate, okay? I'm going to mute it because I don't like that music. But I just want y'all to see. Let me go. I want you to see how the octopus works. Well, let me go back. So you see the octopus is filling itself up in the jar. And I'll put this on there so you can watch it in its entirety. But the, the narcissist, the octopus was able to get out of a container with the jar screwed on it because they feel he filled the um jar up with his body and was able to because they have no spine right and he was able to finagle his way out of the jar with the top screwed on it and this is how narcissists work they are able to get out of situations right situations court dates all kind of drama because they have that spirit of octopus that is enabling them to get out of crazy situations. And because they have, they surround themselves with enablers, they are able to build up a network 
through their through you know systems of systems if we're looking at this in the natural world but they are able to have the people around them that will help get them out of these situations and they work very similar to an uh an octopus right so that right there i was just like wow look at these things they are ugly i'm sorry i don't like octopuses i do not like octopuses and i'll put that video um i'll put that video in there i'll put that video in the thing in the uh description but yeah i was just like these things this is how they work so they have no skeletal system right who said that right it is evil looking right the way the octopus got out of that jar right and that's how you're thinking you're like oh, okay the narcissist this time they're gonna you know they're gonna get there you know god god is in control god is has you know is is you know gonna give us vengeance and all of that we don't worry about that but you're thinking oh this time you know i've spoken out that's what i was thinking i've spoken out the narcissist is gonna get you know they just do in some kind of way they find their way out of those those situations until until god reaps judgment up on them okay Thank you, Gigi. Thank you so much. All right. So let's, uh, we're about, we're a little halfway through. All right. So we talked about how they get in your circle. All right. That's the same way uh, a narcissist gets in our circles. Okay. They do the same type things. They will get in your circle and you don't, before you've known it, you don't know what's going on. And they're picking up the phone when they get mad at you and they're calling your parents. And they're calling your mother and your father. They're calling your best friend. They're calling people in your circle, all right, to, to talk bad about you while you're being loyal to them. All the while, you don't even know what's going on, all right? A friend, they, they, get, they get in your circle. You you brought them, you know, along, and then they stab you in the back. This is what that octopus spirit does. It gets in your every area of your life, all right? All right, so the, the octopus has no skeletal system, and likewise, a narcissist has no conscience, and it enables them to do do what they do. You were like, well, why is the narcissist doing this? Why are they doing this? Because they're a lot of them are reprobate. All right, they are on the road to reprobation. They have a lack of remorse. They don't care who they hurt. All right, all they care about is their objective. All they care about is getting narcissistic supply. All right. And however they have to twist, turn and lie, just like that jar, that octopus in that jar, they will twist, turn and lie to smear your name. All right. All right. And I think I already talked about this. I'll hit on this a little bit more when I start talk about the dreams. So that's how they, um, well, no, I don't want to talk about that just yet. All right. So, okay. So yeah, that was that one. All right. Spirits associated with the octopus marine spirit. I talked a little bit about this before. We remember um, that that octopus spirit, that's a, a ruling uh, spirit. All right. All right. So it operates with, with, with other demonic spirits and sins of the flesh. All right. So this is why it is so important to crucify this flesh. It is so important to go through deliverance. All right. And that big old head at the head of that is usually idolatry or witchcraft and it's controlled through other demonic spirits or through its tentacles. All right. So this is why um, the spirits associated with I already talked about a little bit about this because it is a water spirit. All right. It's associated with a lot of schizophrenia, uh, mental illness, dementia, uh, you'll see heads covered in snake. That is some, you know, how the snakes coil around your head, uh, to, to blind you, to, uh, uh, blind your, blind you from your dreams. All right. You'll see, uh, uh, different other demonic spirits come in through this spirit. All right. Well, I've seen people that, uh, have night visitations by these spirits, uh, spirit spouses and demons sexually attacking them at night. All right. And a lot of times because they'll go to psychology, tell the psychologist that a demon is attacking you. They're going to put you on some heavy medication. All right. They tell you, tell the therapist that your child is having night terrors. Tell the therapist that your, that, that you can't sleep. Tell the therapist, all they're going to do is tell your child, tell your therapist that your child is having problems in school. All they're going to do is put them on some heavy medication and going to tell you that your child has ADHD or ADD. All right, because psychology does not have the answers for demons. Psycho sitting on a psychologist's couch is not going to cast out demons. They do not cast out demons. They medicate them. All right. So, so many people have been deemed crazy and emotionally unstable. All right. By, by this world when actually they are seeing things, they see these things and we calling them crazy. 
No, it's a lot of people sitting in a four padded, a, a four wall padded cell because they have told somebody what they have gone through. And they've been talking to themselves. They don't know that they really, they really see these things in the spirit. Do you understand me? And a lot of them have, have been on drugs and different things and they don't understand. Don't open the door to Farmica. Don't open for Farmicos. Don't open that door to drugs and alcohol. You are playing with a dangerous game. It is called spirits for a reason. And you're talking about marijuana, Mary Jane. Jane, and you thinking you're not doing anything to your body, and then you're around here hallucinating and, and doing different things. Get off of that stuff. Do you hear me? Don't even start it if you haven't. Because after narcissist abuse, it is common for people to go into these things because they want a quick fix. They just want the pain to go away. And if you don't allow God to heal that pain, if you don't allow God to bind up those wounds, you'll find yourself uh, going into sexual ex escapades. You'll find yourself going into uh, a drug addicted lifestyle. You'll find yourself addicted to alcohol. You'll find yourself emotionally tormented. And that is not what God wants for you. So you have to understand in a narcissistic relationship, you are abandoning yourself to attach yourself to an octopus spirit, to a dark entity that cannot give love. Make that make sense. You are full of love. You are full of vigor. You are full of life. And you are allowing this demonic spirit, these demonic spirits, all right? Now, it's one thing if you don't know, but you know somebody's a narcissist. You have discerned that that person is a narcissist. God has shown you the signs and you are still there. You are playing Russian roulette with your life, with your purpose, with your destiny, all right? When that black blob, that black... Uh, um, uh, octopus, that blob of a demon tries to, to, to grab hold of you. It is not, it does not want to let you go. It has those suckers on the bottom of it for a good reason. Do you understand me? It is so that it can grip you. It is so it can suck the life force out of you. And that's what a narcissist does. Do you hear me? It tries to suck the life out of you little by little do you hear me all right so we have to understand that these spirits come from the marine and water kingdom they they love hanging around different regions that are close to bodies of water as i said before but of course they're not they don't just stay there all right some of them are so advanced now that they are able to walk out on water the, the water spirits are able to walk out on water, all right, and then come back into the water, all right, and, and do 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 what it do what it does, all right. And some of the the, the most strongest, most powerful spirits, the, those marine kingdom spirits are powerful. Now they're not more powerful than the blood of Jesus. Nothing is. Do you hear me? But they, if you go into that that witchcraft, that um, you allow these things to uh, impact you, they are hard. They are easy to get out to get into and hard to entangle yourself from, but only the blood of Jesus. That is the only thing that will entangle you from these demons, from these marine kingdom spirits, all right? So we talked about uh, how the narcissist interweaves or gets into your circle. They work like octopus. Uh, every leg uh, and arm has its own brain. Can you imagine? Demons have their own individual functions, but they work individually and collectively to seduce and control you, starting with your emotional emotions. Narcissists always appeal to the realm of the soul. They want to work with your mind, your will, and your emotions, and they use the octopus spirit of intimidation of control, of domination to get into you. That's why they tell you those sob stories as soon as you meet them. It is a whole lot of, uh, a little bit of truth with a whole lot of lies. That's why you have to have discernment and faith over feelings. When someone brings their problems to me, their problems don't become my problems. It's not up to me to solve your problems. It's not up to anybody to solve your problems. Then the prob the number one problem solver, that is God. All right, so stop looking to people to solve your problems because you don't want to do the work. And I don't mean get caught up in works of the flesh, but you don't want to read. You don't want to see God with everything. If you, when you want, when you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, you will run after God wholeheartedly. Ask me how I know. Ask me how I know. Only when I got tired of my own mess, 
all right? Only when I got tired of backsliding, going to the altar, crying up to the altar, only when I sat with God seriously and I said, no more of this, was I healed and set free. And I'm still getting healed and set free from things. But that narcissist comes in every which way. It comes in through your emotions. It comes in psychologically to get in your mind, to get in your subconscious mind. That's why God had me learn about the subconscious mind and the conscious mind, all right? All right, and then you got people opening up their third eye. That's where that marine kingdom, that's where that octopus spirit likes to go. You ran her talk about chakras and things. That's what that spirit is doing. When you're opening up your third eye and getting into new age, you better be careful what you're doing because you're opening up something to the demonic realm and only the blood of Jesus can close up that thing. But that octopus spirit likes to get in there once you open up your third eye and your sixth eye and your sh first chakra and sixth chakra and all that stuff. All you're doing is opening yourself up for these octopus spirits, for these demonic spirits to come in and fill the spaces. Do you understand me? So we have to be careful about what we are opening. So psychology, so uh, 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 what else? Uh, acupuncture, don't be doing that. Reiki, uh, reflexology, I had to repent for that. I used to go and get my massages and do reflexology. I had to stop that, okay? So just go to God with, with about anything and he will show you. Ask him. All you got to do is ask him. You ain't got to be asking everybody. Just ask the Holy Spirit. He'll tell you, all right? Because even I don't know anything. I just know what God has shown me. But you go to God about everything. Do you hear me? All right? So uh, 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 what else? Uh, hypnosis, all right? Uh, law of attraction. Talking about manif manif manifesting, all right? Talking about meditating and all this stuff. All you're doing is opening up your body for these demons to come in. This is not a game. All right. And then the narcissist knows how to get into your mind where you only think of them. And now you're ruminating on them because that spirit has gotten into your uh, uh, permeated your spirit and tried to impact your soul. So emotionally, psychologically, financially, they make you dependent upon them or you become uh, or they become dependent upon you. They become either your knight in shining armor or your or a damsel in distress. They are either the victim or the hero. All right. Sexually. Oh, baby, get ready, get ready, get ready. All right, these wildebeests, these demons are about to hook their tentacles right around you. You think, see, this world has told us that sex, uh, you know, you're in love, you're in love. Oh, I'm in, I love, I love, love. They made an idol out of love. All right, the homosexual, the prior community has tried to take love and make it an idol. Mm -mm, that ain't God. That ain't God, all right? God is many things. God is a man of war. Do you hear? A God of war, all right? So these people, they know what they're doing and they get you sexually. See, that's why they want people in homosexual lifestyles. They want people fornicating. They want people committing adultery. This world wants to lead you right into it. And if you're not willing to give those things up, you are making an idol out of those things, all right? And you will pay for that. I'm sorry, nobody told you it was consequences. We, we, you can do anything. You can live any kind of way. You can turn yourself into a, 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 a plant. All right. That's what we doing. We turn ourselves into everything nowadays. I want to be a, you want to be a boy, be a boy. You want to be a girl, be a girl. Just do, do as thou wills. That's the Alistair Crawley, the 666, the generation that we live in. I, I bind that up in the name of Jesus, but they want you to be controlled subconsciously. All right. You give up your authority and your body to come into agreement with those spirits, with an octopus, Jezebel, Jezebel filled demonic narcissist. And you think that that's God. God ain't in that. You put that together. God didn't put that together. All right. And until you come out of agreement with those things, they will they have the power and authority to trample up on your head when it should be reversed. All right. Narcissists take up your time. Do you hear me? They like to message you because that, you know, that keeps that connection going. Hey, boo. Good morning, sunshine. Good morning, beautiful. Good morning, king. Good morning, queen. Hey, love. Hey, sugar, honey, bunny lips. All kind of messages and texts and all kind of things when you first meet them. This is purposely done to get you addicted to the highs and lows that they about to take your butt on that emotional roller coaster. They about to take you on it. Do you hear me? So because we were void of self-love, 
we had unaddressed trauma wounds. We were ripe for the narcissist. We were ripe for an octopus spirit. And a lot of us, it was already working in our lineage. So we never saw it coming. It is a familiar spirit. All right. So they never, we never saw them coming and they like, got them, got them. All right. So now when the narcissist doesn't text back as, as soon, when the narcissist do what they do, we want a hit of that dopamine, don't we? We want that oxytocin. All right. We like Pookie. That junk be calling. It be calling. Where is Pookie at? Let me see if I got Pookie. It be calling you. All right. So this is why you have to watch that. You have, you can't fill boys up with, with money. You can't fill it up with success. You can't fill it up. Only the blood of Jesus, only God can get into those wounds. If you don't fill that up with the blood of Jesus, if you don't allow God to bind up those wounds, you're going to be like Pookie and that junk going to be calling you, man. Do you understand me? What the narcissist does, all right, You, despite everything that they do to you, you'll still want to stick around because you want a hit of the dopamine. You want a hit of the oxy. You want some love drugs. Do you hear me? So this is done purposely. All right. Physically, they want to be next to you. They take up your time. Spiritually, they'll use the Bible to get in there. They'll use church. They'll assimilate just like that octopus. They'll become whatever it is. They'll use church and your own love of God to mistreat you. Make that make sense. They'll go against everything that God is and then use it against you when you don't know. That's why God says, study, study, study to show thyself approved. All right. It didn't say go sit at the feet of your pastor. All right. And nothing against pastors. Because I will always say we got some good ones out here. But God says, sit by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the best counselor. The Holy Spirit is the best teacher. And then God can send you out. And then you will recognize a false wolf from a, a false prophet much more easier. Do you understand me? Your spirit will quicken when something is not right. The more we discern, all right, the more we sit with God and because God's word is the standard. But when you don't know the standard, when you don't know what God's word says that love is, how do you measure that up? You got to sit with God so he can tell you who you are. That's why some of you today still don't know who you are because that narcissist came in there and told you you were ugly, told you you were stupid, told you you were dumb, told you you were fat, told you you were too light, told you you were too black, told you you were this, told you were you were that. And then you let that stuff in your subconscious and you let it play back like an A-track. And now that octopus spirit is wrapped around your doggone head so tight. Do you understand me? So your mind has to be renewed. This is why we go through deliverance. This is why we learn about these things. Not so we can get puffed up with vain knowledge so that people can be set free. So your children can be set free. So the curses can be broken up off of you. Do you understand me? So that we can sh uh, share and, and, and help one another, bear one another's burdens. Do you understand me? But that narcissist comes in there any, every which way because it's tentacles. It wants to hook its tentacles right into you. Do you hear me? Um, okay. Yes. All right. So they'll use whatever you can, whatever you don't know about, the narcissist is going to try to know about it. Do you hear me? They'll go against everything that you don't know. So this is why uh, uh, you know, we really have to get with God and sit with him and you can't want to bypass the process. So many want to bypass the process. If you want to bypass the process, you will end up in witchcraft. Do you hear me? You got to let God do his will in you. You got to submit yourself to the process. All right. But narcissists work to establish a soul tie, uh, agreement with you very quickly. They flatter, Watch when somebody is always flattering you. Now, and I know we give compliments. I love giving compliments, but I, you know, we don't do that to flatter, to, to, to get something back. That's what a narcissist does. They lie, they deceive, and they manipulate. All right. So we have to understand whether it's your partner, your family. All right. They're trying to get into your mind. Do you hear me? They're trying to get into your mind and to every space every nook and cranny. Did you see how that octopus was able to maneuver itself? All right. Was able to finagle itself out of that jar. That is what a narcissist does. It tries to get into every space, 
every thought of yours. Do you hear me? So the narc is going to try to get into your psyche to control the mind. The narcissist wants to control you so that it can have its way with you. That is what the octopus spirit does. They want to make you ruminate over them. Do you hear me? They want to make you drunk in love. You know, you shouldn't be drunk in love. Don't listen to Beyonce. She'll have you drunk in love with a whole demon. Do you hear me? All right. So we have to understand what this means. So friendships, they'll get next to your friendships. They'll bond with you over trauma. All right. And I'm probably going to talk a message on this. Y'all, we have to be careful. All right. Even in the narcissist community. You have, we all have to be careful because the enemy is, is seeking whom, you know, roaring to and fro. All right. So when you bond over trauma, because it's easy. Oh, I went through narcissist abuse. You went through narcissist abuse. But like that, that TikTok that I posted, fast friends, fast enemies. All right. These, these narcissists, they don't like when you have friends outside of them. All right. They'll pour that mortons all over your name. And you think that, and then they'll come to you about not, you know, they don't like a certain person or, or this or that. And the whole time, they don't even like you either. All right. So take your time. Yes, some people we're going to click with. Some people we're going to bond with. But allow it to take, take uh, you know, to grow naturally. All right. So be careful who we bond with over narcissist abuse and who we partner with. I'm talking to myself too. All right. So uh, let's see what else. Uh, and we know that this relates to the, to the end times. All right. We can see this is why God has told us to come out of Babylon because the Babylon is about to fall. It's built on witchcraft and Freemasonry and, 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 uh, sorcery and idolatry. That's what the United States has been built on. They lied to you talking about my country, Chizity. They had us memorizing them scriptures. No, or memorizing them verses. Uh, no, it ain't, no, this ain't the land of the free. No, uh, we just as much as in bondage. That's why God is calling us out of these things. All right. All these false lit religions. When you start to see all these false leaders, this is what T.D. Jakes and Oprah and all the Joe O's, all these people are leading. They, they are uh, uh, assigned. They are on a mission to lead people to coexist with the Pope, to coexist. No, I uh, ain't no coexisting. Ain't no co God. Jesus said, I ain't come to bring peace. I, I'm, I'm bringing a sword. All right. So these people will lead you right. That is to lead people to worshiping the Antichrist. So we have to understand just like the, the octopus spirit, the same thing is with Babylon. All right. So if you don't get out of, out of false religion and idolatry and witchcraft and your culture and all these things, it's just like the octopus. All right. We don't come out of these things. It'll lead you right into end time deception. It'll lead you right until into, uh, uh, worshiping the Antichrist. We don't want that. All right. So if you're having dreams about the Antichrist, the Holy Spirit will reveal these things to you, okay? All right, whether it's a squid spirit, octopus spirit, the squid has tentacles too, all right? They, they sure do. So we have to uh, uh, study study these spirits. Uh, 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 look at your background. Look at your family pathology, all right? And your dreams come to warn. It could be warning us or it could be something that uh, we are involved in that we need to examine our, ourselves, okay? Something that we need to get out of it so that octopus if you're dreaming about octopuses it could represent it could it could be uh, an indication of several things okay but go to holy spirit and ask him all right all right but that octopus is a is a uh symbol of control of intimidation of dominance all right of avoidance all right when you have that uh and i had to pray about this too spirit of uh, procrastination of fear all of that those are all all intertwined you know subsets of these spirits all right these spirits work in groupings where you find fear you'll find rejection you'll find other things okay so you have to uh, see what god and 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 see what that strong man spirit is okay a spirit of deception so that's why now we have to be careful about taking certain people at face value they may be actually trying to deceive you with uh telling you things all right this is why we have to be led by the holy spirit so just like the octopus spirit can do uh narcissists change their physical appearance all right to fit in with ever circle they want to fit in with okay all right so let's see uh what else all right almost done so how to bring you back how do they try to bring you back in all right these spirits don't want to let you go they do not want to let you go they think of you just like a demon they think of you as their host they think of you as home all right 
unless you expose them, then they don't want nothing to do with you. If there's risk of exposure, they don't want nothing to do with you. Oh, thank you, sis. Thank you so much, Tiff. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so very much for that. I really appreciate you. God bless you. God bless you. May God return that to you over and abundantly. Thank you so much. Now, if there is risk of exposure, they don't want anything to do with you, okay? But because octopuses are, are spineless creatures, nar narcissists are spineless emotionally, spiritually, every kind of which way, all right? But they these spirits allow them to be smart and outsmart you. Do you hear me? This is why they're able to escape these things. I used to wonder how narcissists were able to get themselves out of so many situations seemingly unscathed. Like the ex used to say, uh, it's, I, I have nine lives. He, I mean, he was lying, but in a way I understood. Now I understood what he meant. Do you hear me? All right, because he's able, he was able to get out of these situations. They lure you in by lying and camouflaging who they really are. And because now they are interwoven into your circles, into every, every area of your life, they know your circle. All right, they get in with your social circles. If you're married or dating, they meet your family and then they put on the best act. All right. All right. They find out where you work. They find out where you live. They know your routines. They get into every part of your psyche. They learn you. They know what makes you sad. They know your triggers. They know your past. And then when you uh, uh, when you act up or something. All right. When you don't go along, when you don't go along with the program, when they can't use you anymore, when they're tired of you, when they get a new supply. All right. Then you're going to see the real them. When you tell them, no, oh, no, I can't do that. Oh, no, I can't be at this meeting. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm not able to co-sign for you. Solomon mentioned that yesterday. I can't do this. Don't be co-signing on nobody's nothing. All right. So when you when when these things happen, you're going to see the real person. All right. And then if people don't know if this is why we have to be so careful about who we share um, narcissist abuse with, because the same if a, a family member or somebody who doesn't understand narcissist abuse, they will tell you to go back. They will tell you. Oh, they didn't mean it. Oh, that's your mama. Oh, that's your daddy. Oh, that's family. Family this, family that. All right. They think that this person is a good woman or a man. You know the truth. Don't gaslight yourself. And I have to tell myself that. All, don't gas myself. Don't gaslight myself when God has revealed the spirit in a person. Do you hear me? So these people see the external, but you know the truth. So stand on it. Y'all remember, it was a Tyler Perry movie, right? Uh, me and Tyler was talking about this last night, where the mother, I think it was Lynn Woodfield. I don't know the name of that movie. I tried to find it. I couldn't find it. She was a, basically a narcissist. And she was trying to get Blair Underwood. I think uh, the daughter was marrying the daughter, or the daughter was marrying Blair Underwood, even though he was abusive. The mama wanted her to stay with the man because he had money. That's a narcissist. That's a toxic mother. That is a toxic parent. Somebody is mistreating you and abusing you and you're, you're telling your family and they're like, oh, just stay because he pays the bill. All right. He pays the bill. All right. Or she does this for you. No. All right. So that Blair Underwood used their relationship uh, with the mother to to uh, keep, you know, the daughter in bondage. All right. That's bad. So if you don't know, if they don't know about narcissists, if they are unawakened, they will um, they will say and do things and that will trigger you. And that will make you want to stay in that situation because now you're gaslighting yourself. Now you're like, oh, well, maybe, you know, they don't, you know, they know. No, no. They'll tell you, oh, go around your family. Oh, go. You go around them. If they so good, you go because I ain't going. It ain't no food. You ain't even supposed to be eating with evildoers. That's another subject, though. We ain't even supposed to be breaking bread with these people. Oh, go around. Go around. Go to the go to the reunion. Go. No, God, don't even eat with evildoers. And these are evildoers. People that smear your name, people that's lying on you, and you think they good because they're your family. Because they're your man, your, your wife, your girlfriend. No. Uh-uh. All right. So we see uh, these things will get in every, every area of your life to lure you back in. They will use your family. They will use whoever. They, they will use your children. All right. These things are low. They will use your children to get back in or to get in with you. Do you hear me? They will use whoever they can. They will send flowers to your, you got a restraining order and they send in flowers to your house. 
you got a restraining order and they still reaching out to people. You got a restraining order and they calling you from a virtual number. All the things I've been through. All right. So I know if it was done to me, it was done to somebody. They don't care. All right. They think they are against the rules. Just like the octopus spirit, they feel like they can get in and maneuver any way they can. All right. And they'll get in good with your friends, with whoever to, to torment you. All right. So let me see what y'all said. And then I'll, um, let me see. Uh, oh, somebody talking about Pookie. Yes. Right. They are so draining with those foolishness. Oh, they're narcs. Amen. It hurt to it hurt to go through it with the narcissist, but it empowered us, and we are chain breakers now. Amen. Amen. Let me go all the way down. Right, they are stripping us. They are stripping our rights. How is that free? It's no, it's no freedom in a narcissistic relationship. Amen. We are the salts of the earth. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Pope friend is the Antichrist of Second Thessalonians two and the first beast. Mm hmm. Yeah, he he's something. He he's definitely something. Um, definitely demonic. That whole Catholicism. Y'all come out of that stuff. Come out of it. Come out of it. Come out of false religions. Uh, uh, Catholicism and Rome. Like you go back and study history and all this stuff. You'll see how this stuff came. How all these, you know, paganism and all these things came to be from the from the uh, Roman Empire, from the Greek Empire. And then we got people out here wanting to be Greek. It don't even make no sense if you study history. It really doesn't like the Bible will tell you and reveal so much to you. Right. Have you right? Take your hair out and have you pulling your hair out. Hey, sis. Yes, it will. Yes, yes. While y'all all in here, please hit the like button. Okay. Share this out. Somebody needs this. Somebody needs to break. Somebody else needs to break free from this. Okay. They are all antichrist. Yes, heavy with the antichrist spirit. So look at this thing. You think this thing is your friend? You think somebody who has a spirit? of of uh octopus is your friend all right and this was us we we didn't know we didn't know what was going on so this octopus has all these nine brains three hearts all right ink all these and then this is us over here the human one brain one heart red blood all right so before we knew about these things i mean we just didn't a chance without the blood of jesus without god's army we didn't stand a chance against these things. The only way to combat these things is through the word of God. All right. You think something like this in the spirit, you see this thing right here in the spirit, you think that you are a match for this? Oh, I'll just gray rock it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Is that how that work? All right. That ain't even how that work. I'm sorry to tell you that ain't even how that work. Do you hear me? Okay. I had to be very weird of narc coaches on social media. I follow some up until I realized they have rotten fruit. I wanted no involvement in any drama. I began to see nothing but witches in disguise. And I, and that's sad. It's sad. But um, a number of them are. You know, if you in the same place, talking about the same thing, I said, God ain't stagnant. God is not stagnant. He may, you know, it may be some slow growth and and different things, but it's some. It's some. you're going to bear fruit in other ways, you know. And if you're still in the same place, Talking the same thing, like you might just want to examine that. Like, what's their fruit? What's their fruit? You know, what's their fruit? Please lead us, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Or Don, it was a Christian art coach or claim she didn't follow Jesus. It, I mean, so we gotta be careful, even with Christian, so-called Christian. I mean, you have to be careful. You just have to be careful because the light, the one thing about God is gonna bear fruit, okay? And, and don't think, don't associate numbers with fruit or popularity with fruit that that's not the same thing you know so you when you know god's word it's so important to know god's word and you may you know you may follow them for a season even me you're gonna follow me for a season and you should be you're gonna be going on i don't get offended when people go on because you should be you should be you know um no you don't nobody owes us anything you know what i'm saying because god's gonna send people god's gonna send people so I don't get me. Oh, y'all ain't watching no more. So somebody else, God is in somebody else. And that's not cocky. That's just how God works. He'll send the right people. So you may watch these people for a season. And then it's just like, you know, you, you might've started out on Joe Osteen, but at some point, like you can't stay there. You might've started out watching TD. I did both. Of, you can't stay there. Once you get into God, they may, you know, God may use them to help bring you 
into into this thing and and you know but you can't you can you get the more you know uh revelation god gives you you still there you still there no uh-uh uh uh nah, uh uh-uh. you gotta examine that thing mm-hmm heaven is not in the clouds somewhere out there heaven is a state of being god's spirit within thyself thy soul mm-hmm when the narcissist die no more escaping they will be no nope, it won't be it won't be no more escaping no more escaping so yes we see how these things work how they look saying ain't no joke okay it's no joke all right so let's talk about how to break free so we can get out of here all right so you gotta think like i showed you that picture the octopus versus the human okay we were no match the the tentacles uh are like demons that empower them all right so on that like i said on their own they may not be that smart all right you know i used to think that with a with a relative of mine i was like he's married to a codependent empath with low self-esteem she has a master's and all this stuff and always bragging on it all right but i'm like you and i and i guess you know i can say the same for myself i'm being honest you let this low level but i woke up quick low level narc who didn't even graduate high school run circles around you and i was like how and i'm thinking now i know why so if that was you, don't feel, you know, you understand why now so that that can't happen again. Without the Holy Spirit, we are no match for these demons. Without the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, we are able to stand and resist them. God steps in and fights for on our behalf. Christ redeems and his angels fight on our behalf. So spiritually speaking, this is a communion like creature. All right, that can change its appearance to stay hidden. All right, somebody in here right now is a narcissist, according to statistics, and they and you want to stay hidden. God will expose that thing. Do you hear me? God will expose that thing, and then they they may come for a little bit, but you can't stay too long. You won't be able to stay too long. I'm telling you. But these spirits are sneaky. These people are sneaky. They are crafty. All right. These squid spirits, these octopus spirits. All right. They love assimilating. They love being around people with God's anointing. They do. All right. Diviners. They love being around people with the anointing. They love it so that they can leech off of you so they can see so they can mirror and mock and mimic you. You can't duplicate it. You can try to, but you can't replicate the Holy Spirit. Do you hear me? All right. But we're living in a time of end time deceptions where what looks good to our minds, what looks popular is not is not always right. So because we don't know, we have to go to the Holy Spirit. So I'll tell you, honestly, I don't know. I don't I don't know. You know, somebody if, unless somebody manifests or something like that, these people are good. I, I'm not even going to lie. So that's why I have to sit with God and go to God about that thing, you know, and in, in time. In his time, he'll reveal it. He'll reveal it or he'll cut it off or he'll close the door on it. You know, and when somebody rejects you, you got to learn that that's God's protection. What seemed like somebody rejecting you, what seems like somebody doing, you know, unfriending, unfollowing or, or, you know, discarding you, that's God's protection. Do you hear me? So we got to learn to reframe this thing. So, and then understand that when things happen, not everything now the enemy will use everything that he can to attack us all right through open doors but sometimes the enemy attacks even without an open door job didn't have an open door so when somebody gets sick or or when something happened the first time we say oh the devil did well we don't want to give him too much credit either because he strikes at will or when we are weakened all right when we don't expect it and let's be honest, Satan doesn't need a reason to attack us. He don't need an open door to attack us. Now, will it, will it, he need an open door to, you know, to stay there, but to attack, to, to shoot a fiery dart? All right. No, which is why we're supposed to live in a battle ready state and walk in the spirit of God. Cause God warns us of impending attacks through our dreams. But a lot of times we quench it. We, oh, no, she just. God has likely already warned you about that person. Oh, no, that's my friend. Oh, no, she seemed like, oh, no, she, he wouldn't do that. Yes, he would. Yes, he would. Yes, he would. Right, you never know what people are capable of. 
All right. So we have to be careful not to quench the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit tells us in so many ways. All right. If you get discernment that a, a squid or an octopus spirit, you get a dream, you know, don't take that for granted. Take that to God. And then you got to sever. That's like we talked about the python snake. I had to cut the head of that snake off. I couldn't play with it. Oh, just let her around. Let's let her let her come in. She no, I'm cutting your head off. God show me something. I'm cutting your head smooth off. Do you hear me? I'm not playing with you. I'm not pacifying you. Oh, well, why don't you just let me? She can't get saved. Bye. I'm not playing with no demons. Do you hear me? Now, if that person wants to be free and, and has a repentant spirit and has a repentant heart, then we can work. Uh, I apologize. I'm repenting. Uh, but now they, they, mm -mm, they mm -mm, mm -mm, I don't have time for that. And you don't either. I'm, I'm not somebody's savior. But people will try to make you somebody else's savior. You got, I have to want to be saved on my own. In order for me to be saved, I have to want to be saved. That narcissist has to want to be saved. Can the narcissist be saved? Oh, no, God can do anything. Yes, God can absolutely. This is Abba. This is Elohim. This is Yahweh we talking about. Can he do anything? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. But after a certain amount of time, God gives them space to repent. God gives them space and time and his grace to repent. And after a while, if they don't want to be free, God gives them over. Didn't you know that? There was a time and space where even us, we wanted something so bad. We wanted this narcissist so bad, even though there were signs, even though, even with our families, God has shown us time after time, these people mean us no good. They're going to continue to hurt us. And God has shown us who they really are. And if we don't wake up and get away from them, God will give you over to them and he'll let them have their way. Now he'll cover you, you know, for a season. He'll cover you. He'll keep, he'll cover you. He won't, you know, according to his will, he'll, he'll cover you. But if you don't want to let that thing go, then God's going to be like, okay, she got it. He got it. They got it. So every day I ask God to come into my heart. God, not my will be done. Your will be done. Show me where people are around me that don't mean me no good. Because people are, Satan used people just like God uses people to bless us. All right. Satan uses people to curse you. And if you stay in these situations and under these families and under these curses, you are going to be cursed. God is not going to send you blessings like that until to the full blessings, until you get from under the curse. Somewhere, because we haven't been taught this, people think that they can do whatever they want to do. And God's going to bless it because that's what the preachers of LA and that's what people show on TV. That's when Mary Mary and other people show us, Kurt Franklin, that he can curse his son out. And people can't discern that he's a narcissist. People can't discern what's going on here. So people think these people are good and they follow them. But God is trying to show us if we listen, if we follow his will, if we, if we walk by discernment, if we walk by faith and not by sight, he will show us when people are not right for us. He will show us. He will show us because he wants to, God wants to protect us. Man, you talk about somebody that is a protector. Oh, it brings tears from my eyes. All the things that God's protected me from. Things that I don't even know about. God has protected you from things that you don't even know about. People who have been slandering your name, people who have been misusing you, people who have been perverting you. God is making a way for you. He has protected you from the fiery darts of the enemy. Don't you understand that? So he wants our obedience. He wants to bless us. But if we don't get from out from under these things, his word is going to stand true. His law is going to stand true. His, you know, what he says is going to stand true. All right. So I hope we are getting this, that this octopus spirit, that this squid spirit is nothing to play with. All right. But we have to be prepared to cast down imaginations. 
all right when every thought that comes in your head is not yours you got to be able to examine that thought all right because the devil will try to bring back a memory that's what that octopus spirit does it it tries to grab hold of your memory that's why a lot of us can't remember our childhood a lot of us can't remember things that have happened to us in our past now some of that god probably is blocking because you're not prepared to deal with it and it's buried in your subconscious but a lot of time that octopus spirit comes in and erases your memories things that you need to know things that that's why you know with our ancestors a lot of times they're so they they uh they love secrecy they, that's why they don't tell you anything because if i don't tell you something you how do you know to break free from it if you don't know your grandmother was an adulterer if you don't know your grandmother was a witch you know and then some of us know it and we just treat it like oh yeah my grandmother was in the witchcraft did you bind that thing up did you take authority over that spirit did you cast that thing down did you renounce it did you come out of agreement with it that's what you should be doing when you talk about what your ancestors was into don't just be saying oh my ancestors was into this oh my great because that is god has revealed that knowledge to you for a reason but satan wants to blind he wants to blind the people of the world the gods of this world have blinded the people but we are supposed to cast down every imagination every high thought that exalted itself against the knowledge of god bringing every thought into captivity and into the obedience of christ so even if you go through deliverance you still people think that deliverance is a magic pill you're still gonna have to cast down imaginations you're still gonna have to resist the enemy do you understand that deliverance is not a magic pill it is a sanctification process all right but if you don't turn your mind to god then these ruminations and these memories will keep continue to to mess with your mind and continue to mess with your head until you get to the stronghold the root of that of that thought what is the root of that when i went to uh, my therapist i was always feeling guilty guilt 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 shame 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 and i got to sit with god god why do i always feel guilty why am i always feeling guilty and he told me guilt was used to control me guilt was used to keep me in a narcissistic family so whenever it was periods of time where i wouldn't speak uh to my mother it was periods of time and because i was always raised like oh you're gonna miss me when i'm gone oh uh uh you know all these things so it was in my head that if somebody died that i would feel guilty if i wasn't speaking to them at that time so that guilt kept me going back to them that guilt kept me in those situations much longer because i was raised in fear and guilt and and the narcissist shame and until i said this ain't mine why am i feeling guilty these people don't feel guilty if they hurt me i'm doing what i'm supposed to do as a child of god but i'm gonna allow guilt to keep me in bondage to you and god i was gonna say, ain't no funerals ain't no grad I, I, I don't none of it none of it so so i can pay homage to a dead person no they go if i'm not going for looks i'm not going because it looks good oh you want to pay respect i pay respect for you while you were here and you didn't want it so now that you're dead i'm going to go there and pretend no i gave you your flowers while you were living that's what i did i honored that father and mother while they were living i honored my family i gave from my heart so i'm not gonna feel guilty oh no so i had to come out of agreement with that guilt and say no more will you no more any you will not use guilt nobody i will not allow somebody to have guilt over me i would not make guilt-based decisions so that's what i'm talking about but god had to show me that god had to renew my mind about these things because i was born into a system that wanted to keep me in captivity and if I didn't renew my mind in him, I would stay in that thing and I would play with that thing. And I couldn't break the curses. God couldn't bless me like he really wanted to because all I would have did was cast, anytime I got some, I gave it away. Anytime I gave, and now, I, now I'm gonna reap that harvest though. You know what I'm saying? Cause God knows my heart truly. 
anytime I'm getting some, I'm trying to see how I can bless somebody. But I was casting in that situation. I was casting my pearls to swine. I was giving that which was holy to dogs and they trampled on it. And don't you know, if you do continue to do that, they are, the dogs will trample upon you. So God had to say, no, I won't, I won't, I will dry this brook up. Because you're not going to continue to give what I have given you to dogs. So when God showed me, he would not bless me until I did his will. Until I let them go. Because all I would have did, I said this time and time again, if I had a million dollars, I would have gave them I would I would have gave it to him. Now I would have kept some. You know what I mean? You know you get what I'm saying. But I always said that. Oh, I'll take care of this. I'll take care of this. But these people ain't, ain't thinking about me. Do you hear me? You gotta say okay. No, nah, no. Nah. You you know you ain't you're not learning. You're not learning. So I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna allow. I'm gonna turn them. I'm gonna turn you over to them and i'm going to allow them to keep hurting you because you are not seeing what i am saying and i was like god allowed him to hurt me until it woke me up until it woke me up and when it woke me up I, once god showed me what he showed me about the python spirit then i could breathe again then not free living was formed. Then ministries were formed. Then businesses were formed. Then my nonprofit was formed. Then uh, my children broke chains. My husband broke chains. Do you hear me? So we think this is just about us. This is not just about you. This is bigger than you. This thing has generational implications. That's why you're in, in the first place a lot of times because your ancestors and your mom and your daddy and your grandmother, and your grandfather sacrificed you for right now. Now, and I'm willing to say, no, I will not allow, I will not sacrifice my children to stay in a narcissistic family. I will not sacrifice my children to stay in a narcissistic marriage sent from the pits of hell. I will not sacrifice that. I will not do that. I will tear down every altar just like Josiah did. I will not be a part of this generational curse because I want God's blessings. But in order to get God's blessings, I have to be obedient. Obedient. Do you hear me? All right. So we have to examine ourselves. All right. We can't keep backsliding. Backslide. No, you got to get real about this thing. You got to get hot for God. Do you hear me? You got to get on fire for God. You have to consecrate yourself. You have to set yourself apart from evildoers. And so many people try to stay in situations where uh, uh, situations in bondage and think they're going to be free. How can you be free in a system that unless you come out of that system, you're not going to be free. How can two walk except they agree? How can light and dark walk? It can't. It can't. Do you hear me? So we got to allow ourselves to be pruned up. We got to allow these wounds. You got to allow God to see. That's what intimacy is. It's into me seeing God, into me seeing things that I can't see. I can't see everything. I can't see the, the narc traits inside of me. I couldn't see that, but God could. God could see where pride was lingering. God could see where rejection was lingering. God could. The psychologist can't do that. The, the psychotherapist can't do that unless you have somebody who knows about spirits. They can't do that. But we live in a backwards world who told you to go to therapy and didn't tell you to sit with the Holy Spirit. And ain't no therapist going to cast that mess out. Do you hear me? So I turn all everything. I allow God to examine every part of me. It's no part of me that, that he's not allowed in. He's allowed into my finances. Oh, yeah, he cleaning that up. He's allowed into our bedroom. He's allowed into my brain. He's allowed into every part of me. No more do I hide. And that's what prunes up that octopus spirit because the demons want to hide in crevices. They want to hide in shame. It wants to hide in guilt. It wants to hide in condemnation. And if you don't prune that thing up, it, you allow it a place, you allow that octopus spirit a place to resign and live within you. It's only the light. It's only the sword of the spirit. It's all your armor that prunes these things up. So you got to turn all those things over to God, all right? Turn them all over. Conquering that octopus spirit 
is not simply done by by gray rocking that thing has to be killed the head has to be taken off that's why some of you now are tormented you have an octopus around your head and you're tormented because you keep playing with that thing you got to take the head off of that thing you can't play with python leviathan jezebel and spirits from the marine kingdom so until you do that you're going to continue to be tormented oh your mama gonna continue to run your life your daddy gonna continue to run your life yeah, the, the person you're with is going to continue to run your life until you raise up in your authority. Until you raise up. When you put on your armor and you slay those demons with the power and authority that Christ gave you. But you're trying to tiptoe around that thing. Oh, I'm going to tiptoe. No, ain't no tiptoeing around no demon. God gave you the power to tread up on the enemy. Do you hear me? So only deliverance, the helmet of salvation, the blood of Yeshua can keep it out and get it out and help it stay out all right cutting off the tentacles is not enough it's going to grow back all right doing if you just just you know just just cut it out no you gotta you gotta go in there cut that slice that thing up and prune up the root all right so you don't you don't want that thing coming back because remember that octopus spirit like a narcissist has the ability to regenerate their 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 tentacles and come back as if they were never cut off. And that's what the narcissist does, all right? So that's what they do, all right? So let's wrap up here. Let me see. What scripture do I wanna read? Yeah, okay. So Luke 11, 24 and 26. When an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. He said, I will return upon my house. The narcissist thing. That's why you wonder why the narcissist never. They don't. They don't cut things off unless they're, they're going to be exposed. So they think of you as their house. That's why they come back. That's why they don't like to, you know, close doors because they think of you. The demons inside of them are, are want to come back at some point in time if you allow it. All right. So I will return to my house whence I came, came out, and when he come, he find it is swept and garnished. Is your house swept and garnished? He got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he goeth and he taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. That's why like with deliverance and stuff like that, you can't play with that thing unless somebody is ready. Unless they ready to keep their house swept clean. Because if you cast them demons out and they not ready to, to do to 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 uh crucify that flesh if they don't have the skills and the tools to stay cleaned up those demons are coming back with seven spirits more wicked than himself this is not a game you can't just get delivered and think oh i'm delivered now no you have to get delivered and clean up your house clean and literally clean up your house but clean up your body all right you must give everything to God. So the anointing, the blood of Jesus can continue to clean you up. You must be diligent to maintain deliverance. It's not automatic. You can't just cry down at the altar and then, the, you know, or go to a deliverance minister and they deliver you from demons and then you, that's it. No, you got to maintain that deliverance. All right. It takes Holy Spirit discipline and endurance to finish until the end lazy undisciplined soldiers don't make it you must be diligent to maintain deliverance okay so you put on every piece of the army of the armor of god therefore put on the armor of god so when the day of evil comes you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand stand firm with a belt i, I put on my arm like i literally go through these pieces with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. If you don't know God's word, how, what do you stand on? You're a weak soldier. And weak soldiers get killed on the battlefield. You can't be no weak soldier in this army. 
You are in the army. You can't be no weak, docile soldier trying to fight an octopus spirit. But if you don't hide God's word in your heart, what are you, what, what are you pulling from? What are you pulling from? You don't have anything to pull up. You don't have anything to, that's why some of y'all get keep getting into it with the narcissist. You don't have enough word in your heart to stand. You don't have to argue with no demons. I don't argue with demons. I cast them out. I command you to go. I take authority over them. Well, I'm mean, arguing back and forth with somebody who's demonically oppressed. Did Christ do that? What, what you, uh, man, I'd be a whole fool. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? So we don't do that, all right? We don't do that. Right, no, right. And that thing, you know, I saw the video, I, I did a little TikTok too, but in the reality, no, that ain't what you do. Ain't no Holy Spirit activate. Ain't no Holy Spirit act. You have to put in the work with our healing. Right, hello, lazy soldiers get chaptered out, dishonorable discharge. I don't know about you, but I want an honorable discharge. I want to get to heaven's gates and I want God to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Do you hear me? Not by my works, not by my flesh, but because I trust in him. I always say, me and Simon just went through a little thing and I was just like, not, not us personally, but through, you know, just situations. And I just kept saying, he coming there, you know, I was like, Solomon, I don't know how, but I know who. <laughs> That's my new saying. Anytime he brings something, did you go in your prayer closet? Did you talk to God about it? That's how we handle things. And I ain't even lying. We might have a little disagreement and we'd be like, come on, let's pray about it. Let's pray. Let's pray. I don't know how. I'm not worrying about it. I don't know how, but I know who. I don't know how he, he does what he does. I don't know how he saved my soul. I just know he did. Do you hear me? So you don't have to worry about it when you know, when you know, truly know your creator. So I truly try to live by faith and not by sight because I can't, why am I going to worry about things that I can't control? When you, when you're in God, truly, he allows you to rest in him. You don't have to worry about it all. He's got it all figured out. Now our human flesh is, it, it wants to worry. Some of you are in some situations today, your flesh wants to worry. But I petition you to turn it over to God. I don't know how, but I know you. I don't know how I'm going to make it through this situation. I don't know how my children are going to return to me. I don't know how I'm going to get through this parental alienation. I don't know how I'm going to get through this court date. I don't know how I'm going to get through this situation. I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill. I don't know how, but I know you. I know you. That's all you got to know. And you got to have faith to depend on him to get you through that situation. Not you. Not your works, not your, not anything that you do. It's nothing that I do. It's everything that he does. I'm not even worthy. I'm not even worthy. But it's him. It's him that delivered me out the hand of Jezebel. It's him that delivered you from that narcissist or is delivering you from that narcissist. There is an appointed time for your breakthrough. There is an appointed time for your healing. Keep that in mind because it's in the way that the devil gets us. The promises of God are yea and amen according to his will. But the devil gets us in the details. The devil gets us in the waiting. The promises, just like Daniel, right? You remember, that's why we call it a Daniel fast. Because for 21 days, the angels were held up. The angel, the angel was held up by a stronger demon, right? By a stronger fallen angel. And the angel had to call on, what did he have to do? Call on, on Michael or call on uh, another angel or call on God? Whatever he did, I have to go back and read him. But some of your blessings are being held up and you got to call on the angels of you call on God to release the angels of breakthrough on your behalf. Call on God. It's an angel. Just like there's a demon for everything. It was only I think Alan B said that only one third of the angels were cast out. It's millions of angels and they're waiting to fight on your behalf. But you're not even calling on God to, for the angels to fight on your behalf. Call on the angels of breakthrough. Call on God to release his angels, but make sure that you're walking according. You've repented. You've renounced the agreements. You've done the things that you're supposed to do. You can't keep walking with the darkness, expecting to be in the light. You got to give it up. 
That's another thing people don't tell you. No, it's a sacrifice to follow Christ. This walk ain't easy. I've had to give up a whole lot. Do you hear me? But I made up in my mind a long time ago. For God, I'm going to live and for God, I'll die. So if that means when they roll these guillotines out here that I got to go, then Father, so be it. I made up in my mind now. So when it comes, I will not bow. That's what you got to do. You got to make up in your mind that no matter what the enemy tries to throw at you, no matter what spirit tries to come in and have its way with you, you got to take authority over that thing. You have the power in Christ. You have the power. If you don't believe in Christ, I, it, I don't know what to tell you. But you have the power to renounce and rebuke Satan and all his demons. You have the right to close every door. And you need to say that in the name of Jesus, I renounce and rebuke you, Satan, and all your demons. I am closing every door that the octopus spirit was able to get into my life. Examine me, Lord. I ask for your forgiveness. I repent of my sins. In the precious name of Jesus, I bind up and I cast out the octopus spirit. I cast out the Ahab spirit that, that tolerates these demonic spirits. I command Satan and all his demons to leave in the mighty name of Jesus. And then the more you, Satan is, Satan is petty, right? So he's petty. So he's going to go to God. He's going to petition the courts of heaven and say, no, 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 I, I have legal right. So that's why you have to close those doors. Oh, no, no, no. See her grandmother, they're, they're still under a curse because Satan, you know, at, at some time, it's, it's somebody has to re-up that curse. So that's why so much has been thrown at you. All right. Somebody, somebody in a lineage, the curse is getting ready to run out the third and fourth generations. Remember, a, God didn't, Ahab repented. So the curses went to his sons. All right. We got to, th this thing is real. These iniquities will visit you through the first, third and fourth generations. And it takes a Josiah spirit. It takes a spirit of a chain breaker to command the, th these demons to go. Do you hear me? So the mind control spirits, I cut their assignment off. You cut the assignment off. I ask God to renew my mind. Spirits of mind control. I forbid you from, from coming into my mind. I make God my Lord. I make Jesus my Lord and Savior. I break down all the walls associated with these demons, with this octopus spirit, with these squid spirits, with these spirits of control. And you have to, with a spirit of control, you have to take control. So some of you are still tormented by your parents because you are you're a grown woman, you're a whole grown man, but your mother and father still have their ties to you. Their ley lines are still connected to you. So you got to cut that off. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't have to have a relationship with you but but with them, but you need to cut their ley lines off. All right? Some of y'all are married and your mother and father still control your relationships. That's not that's not good. Do you hear me? So you command all doubt and unbelief to go right now in the name of Jesus. You command these spirits to be uprooted. You cast them off. You command them to go. You command schizophrenia and double-mindedness. All this works under the realm of the octopus spirit, the squid spirits. You break their power and command them to go. All right? But the more Holy Spirit you have... <laughs> The more anointing you have. So ask God, if you don't have, ask God for his anointing. He don't just give it to me and, and people. Who are, he gives it to, he gives it freely because he wants us free. That's why it's not just given to your preacher. It's not just given to your pastor. They should be equipping you. They should be equipping you not to sit up under them, but to make you fishers of men. So that more people can go out and do this work. The harvest is, is plentiful, but the workers are few. The workers are few. That's what this spirit wants to do. It wants to come in and have you, have you quiet, have you silenced. Have you sitting in the wilderness in, in forever. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I, I don't know. You know, no, no. 
You can't do that, but God can do it through you if you just say, I'll go, I'll do it, God. I didn't know two years ago I was going to be sitting on YouTube or a year ago, whatever, when I started this channel. I didn't know that years ago. I'm, I'm introverted by nature. Who would have thought that? It's the boldness. And then the more you step out, the more he blesses you. He does. He's not going to bless disobedience like that. You're so scared of what people say that you won't do what he's called you to do. There's purpose inside of you. Okay? There's purpose. Lord, I repent for anyone on my father's side of the family and anyone on my mother's side of the family going all the way back to Adam for serving any other God other than you, Lord. Sorcery be gone, be done. Amen. Amen. All right? So, yeah, we, we're not playing with these things. The more we know, study the study about the octopus spirit. Ask God to give you revelation in Raymond Word. So those mind control spirits, that the legalistic spirits, the anger, the um, religious spirits, all right, mind control, squid, all octopus, command those things to go, all right, take control. But just like I always say about Jezebel and Ahab, there can be no Jezebel without Ahab. There can, there cannot, it has to be somebody giving up their authority to let these spirits run rampant. And that's what these spirits come to do. They come to thwart God's plan for you. Do you hear me? And God doesn't want that. All right. So Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this rhema word. We thank you for this revelation. We thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you for saving our souls, Lord. Where will we be? Where would we be without you, without your covering, without your anointing, without your hand upon us? The enemy wants to sift us out like wheat. So as much as we complain about our circumstances, help us not to complain. Help us not to complain about things, Heavenly Father, but come to you and petition you. You already know the things that we need. You, We ask not because we have not because we ask not. Help us to come to you, Lord. Help us to come to you about everything. There's no decision that I make that I don't want you in a, a part of. None. And I want to make it a habit of giving you everything, of coming to you first before I turn to this world for a solution. I want your solution, Heavenly Father. I want your blessing, Heavenly Father. I want you, Lord, more than anything. So, Lord, we pray for repentance Lord, I pray that you forgive us for our sins, Lord. Those made by commission and omission. We thank you because we're not worthy. We're not worthy only, only because of you, Lord. Only because of your grace and your mercy and your kindness, Lord. Did we not die in our sins, Heavenly Father? So we thank you for keeping us, Heavenly Father. And though, uh, Heavenly Father, those who need to make hard decisions, Heavenly Father, there's somebody that is facing a, 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 a big dilemma. Lord, be with them, Lord. Help them to see that the answers already are, are right there in front of them. But if they seek you, if they stop trying to do it themselves, if they take their hands off of it, take your hand off of it, chain breaker. Take your hand off of it. Stop trying to come up with a solution yourself. God has already figured it out. He just wants you to trust him. He wants you to trust him enough to be able to provide provision and that decision for you. And he's going to show you exactly what you are supposed to do. So, Lord, we thank you for that revelation, Lord. We pray that they heed your words, Lord. We pray that, that the more the more we sit with you, the more hunger we get for your word, Lord. Not just watching YouTube videos, but actually sitting with you, actually picking up our Bibles and reading them, actually letting the word permeate our spirit, actually hiding the word in our hearts, Heavenly Father, actually sitting with you and talking with you. That's what we're going to be doing in heaven anyway. We always sit with God and talking to him. So if you don't want to talk to God now, why would you want to talk to him later? So Lord, give us a thirst and a hunger, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. And we bind up the octopus and squid spirits in the name of Jesus. We command them to go. Lord, unwrap and sever every tentacle of that octopus, 
every tentacle of that squid that is trying to keep us bound in the mighty name of Jesus. We command mind control. We bind it up and send it to the pits of hell. We bind up mind control. We bind up rumination. We bind up sorcery. We bind up witchcraft. We bind up mental illness. We bind it up in the name of Jesus and command it to go. No longer are we in agreement with you. We bind up ADHD. We bind up every demonic spirit from the uh, from the pits of hell, Lord. We are not in agreement and we renounce these spirits, Lord. And we thank you and we loose your love, Lord. We loose a, a strong mind. We bind up double-mindedness, Heavenly Father. We bind it up in the name of Jesus, Lord. We loose your your thoughts in our mind. We lose your will, Heavenly Father. Help us to stand firm on your word and what you and who you are and what you who you say that we are, Lord. We rebuke and renounce everything, every thought that the devil has tried to put in our subconscious mind. May those thoughts be pruned up, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Somebody's been told that they, that they are, uh, uh, that spoken curses over them, that they won't be married, that they won't have a husband, that they won't have a wife, that they won't have this, that by this age, they, uh, age, or time uh, release curses have been uh, uh, spoken over their life and we bind up those curses in the name of Jesus. We come out of agreement with them just because it happened in our family, Lord. We are not our family. We are not our lineage, Lord. We have new DNA. We have been reborn and by your stripes, we are healed. So Heavenly Father, we work according to your will and your plan for our life. What the enemy tried to destroy us with this narcissist abuse, it will no longer have uh just uh uh over domineering controlling effect over our life we take authority over you jezebel and we command you to the pits of hell hallelujah lord release the hounds of heaven against these demonic spirits lord guide us and hide us lord hide us from the enemy lord so he cannot sift us like we so we can raise you up your kingdom and advance your kingdom the way you have called us to do lord we bind up fear and rejection in the mind name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We speak blessings over our finances, Heavenly Father, over our homes, over our children. Our children are blessed because of our obedience. We will pass blessings and deeds to our children, not curses and weeds. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for the recovery. Thank you for the building us up. Thank you for loving us the way that you do. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for a breakthrough. Somebody needs that. Somebody needs to be released from that spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's nobody like the Lord. Nobody. Nobody. Nothing. Nobody. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, husband. This message was powerful. Thank you, Shannon, for letting the Holy Spirit use you. Thank you. God is so good, y'all. God is so good. Thank you, husband. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, come and heal our land, Abba. Touch. And God, let, let me speak blessings over my husband. Hallelujah. Lord, I speak blessings over you, Solomon. Thank you for your diligence. Thank you for your heart. Thank you for your covering. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your commitment to God. Thank you for your commitment to God's people. May everything that you touch be blessed, not because of you, but because of his obedience, because of your obedience and you running after him and you facing Jezebel in the face and telling her to go. For you rebuking the Ahab spirit. Hallelujah. We speak power into you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Cover my husband in the name, in the name of Jesus. I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know I'm a mess. It don't even matter. Our lash is probably looking great. God ain't cry my lash. I didn't cry my lash off. Oh, it's all good. It ain't even about that. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all, I have enjoyed this time with y'all. Thank y'all. I hope y'all were blessed by this message. Yes, some only come out through prayer and fasting. All right. Some only come out by prayer and fasting. So 
make sure that you know you see God for a fast. It doesn't have to be uh what 20 days, 21 days, 40. I saw somebody say they did a 70 day fast. Like like y'all, um, just just be led by the Holy Spirit, okay? God will show you how long to fast and how long you know how long to do these things, okay? According to His will, not according to people, okay? Hallelujah! Thank you. Yes, bind the spirit of holiness due to narc abuse. Yes, that's common. We bind that up in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, glory, glory. We detach and renounce. I love these prayers because somebody needs to say them and hear them. Renounce, denounce by the power and authority of the Holy Ghost, power in Yahweh, Yahweh's name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, y'all. I have enjoyed it. Did y'all enjoy this message? Thank you. I seriously want to sow financial blessings to Shannon Solomon, and I will. Thank you, Jen. Just thank you for your heart. I have to learn how and learn more phone skills. This is good. Holy ground. God will bless our giving. Yes. And God bless you just for that thought. God bless you for that. And may and may you know your may that be returned to you. May somebody else want to sow into you onto good soil. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Shannon, for your ministry. Thank you, Faith Base, for your ministry. And thank you, Allen B. Yes, thank you, Allen B. and Solomon for moderating. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, brothers. I really do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for this word. All glory to God. Thank you, Miss Pre. Beyond blessed, I'm changed by this word. Always worth it being here. May God continue to use you more. Amen. Amen. Right. Right. Girl, I, saw, I was like 70 why i mean you know i guess it was some strong some strong something that she had to break off but 70 days like come on oh oh hey just be led by the spirit yes amen thank y'all for being here this long with me amen thank you queen e god bless you may god cover and keep you and return that to you over and abundantly thank you so much all right y'all i'm gonna get out of here uh, I will see y'all um, next Saturday, if not before, whenever God, because I'm, I told you I'm going to stop. Um, I'm going to, well, I have life coaching next week. I have some appointments, so I'm going to keep those. So I, I look forward to seeing those who uh, who um, I'll be talking to next week. But after that, I'm going to take a break um, from coaching one on one to prepare for um, other ventures and to prepare for my group coaching um, session. But I will have, let me see if I have a banner. I will have my, um, wizio account up and uh you'll be able to get a video just like we're talking now if you have a question you'll be able to um ask your question give me you know like uh type what's going on in the in the boxes and then i'll i'll send you a video message uh in the app or online however it comes to you and you'll get a message directly to your question because I, I i won't be able to respond it's getting to the point where i can't respond to dms and i can't respond i've cut off my fake my personal i hate facebook anyway um um, but I get ready to make some changes there uh, on my IG. I can't respond to everybody's DMs. I want to. Lord knows I do y'all emails. Lord knows I want to respond to all of them, but I'm only one person. So I have to shift and change the way I do things and set up boundaries to protect myself, my sanity, and my peace. And my, and my family is my first ministry, okay? My family is my first ministry, um, but God knows I love y'all and I love um being able to come, I, I I thank him that he's allowed me to do this. This is a blessing. It's not it's not a burden. Um, but um, I, mean, I need to cut some. You know, you, sometimes you got to trim some fat off of some things. So um, I'll be on TikTok and YouTube. I'm cutting out Facebook. Um, it's still ran by my social media manager, and my assistant might be taking that over. So you know, God is growing this thing. It's it's moving leaps and bounds, and it's some things that He has called me to do, and He's not gonna bless me. He's not gonna take His. He He not gonna do what he, you know, what he wants to do until I move on that thing. And I know it, I've gotten my marching order. So it's some things I have to cut off and, and you're going to learn that too. You know, you're going to learn some things you have to cut off. We'll still be on clubhouse on Tuesdays, except the last Tuesday of the month. All right. So um, meet us there, but you can uh, go to my Wizio and you'll be able to ask a question and you'll get a message. And that may work better because a lot of people don't like to show their face. A lot of people just have a question, a long email. So instead of sending me long emails, just go on Wizio and you'll get a video made just for you. Okay. 
All right. So, and then I'll be talking on, on Wizio. You'll see it. Um, it's different sections. Okay. It's narcissist abuse Q and A. If you have a question about narcissist abuse or mentorship, some people, you know, it's so many things that we miss, especially uh, those of us who have narcissistic. All y'all don't have narcissistic parents, but for those of us who do, there's so many things that I realize. You know, you realize uh, as a woman um, that that you may have missed out on. You know what I mean? So that's where the mentorship. You can ask me any any question about marriage, about children, about and I don't know it all, but Holy Spirit does. Don't you know that um, about, you know, just being a feminine woman, because certain things when you go through that, those things are stripped because the devil wants to make you a witch. All right. And then to be a witch, you know, uh, he wants you to 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 stand in control and domination, you know, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I submit to my husband because I submit to God, you know. But these are things that we a lot of times in this culture that we haven't been taught. So if you want to have a mentorship question um, and then King Speaks, that's a spinoff from the one that Solomon is going to do. But men ask me questions. So men will have an opportunity um, to ask me questions um, in there as well. So you get a take from a woman's perspective. All right. So and then the help me section, that's for people like you getting ready to leave. And I will give you the resources that were in my um, domestic violence and narcissist abuse workshop. I gave we gave out a lot of information in there. So if you um, want that information and you you uh, want to get out of that situation, then I will provide those resources to you. There's a lot of resources that were provided in my workshops. And then uh, I'll be having some more workshops and group coaching coming up. And then healing. If you have a question about healing, um, because my time is precious, you know, and I, I said in the beginning, when you work in ministry and business people, they don't want to, they, they don't want to come off of anything. Now they want to give and they chains are being broken. They do not want to give. And I told you, I know my worth now. I know my worth. I know ain't nobody doing this thing. Like I do this thing. And it's not me. It's the power of the Holy spirit. Everything that I give, you know, everything that I pour out, you know, so I know my worth and I won't allow people to miss treat that and treat me like I'm common. Do you understand that? Because I know uh, God has given me uncommon goodness and uncommon anointing to be able to teach and preach this thing the way that I do. And that's God. That's not me. I give him all his glory. So I absolutely have to protect myself. Love your TikToks and bless you for your labor. So uh, your busy day and check uh, TikTok strength to you. God bless you. So I know y'all understand what I mean. And that, that will go for y'all as well. You, you're going to see. And some of y'all already know it. So y'all probably y'all could teach me a, a thing or two about that. OK, so that's there. So I'm going to get off of here. Thank you all so much. I really enjoyed this time. I really enjoyed this teaching. I'll go back. I used to go back and read the question, the comments in the live chat. And then I may um, start doing because I love y'all comments. Like when y'all put them like Violet and Bonita and Mary Ree. And there's some people that always comment once I post the Alan B always post when I post the comments. And then I see some of y'all comments. Um, and I may address them later on or some kind of way because I love y'all comments. Uh, Dinah, that's another one. I always has some fire comments, okay? Uh, and Boothu, all, all y'all really. But uh, yeah, I may figure out a way to do that. But anyway, I'm rambling now. So I will get off of here. God bless you and keep y'all. And I will see y'all uh, around on YouTube and TikTok. God bless you.
Kill the rich, I'm on the base bar. Hit me, you come and come around, run.